<clears throat> We're rolling. <clears throat> <clears throat> me, 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 me. Let's do our mic warm ups. <laughs> <Make them> oh. <laughs> sick. What do you want from me? No, no. You, you do it even when you're not sick. <laughs> Hey everybody, how you doing? Where you been? Welcome to another exciting, rousing episode of Guys We Hugged. It's the anti slut Mean Podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the show. Follow us on social media if you don't already. We're at Guys We F-C-K-E-D on all the things, including TikTok. I'm at Christina Hutch. I'm at Philanthropy Gal. And I'm at Mike Coscarelli. He was thinking he'd take a pot because he was thinking about how his loafers that he got on Poshmark don't fit. <laughs> they fit. They don't fit. They don't fit. They're Ferragamo. They're going to fit. <laughs> What's gonna Ferragamo? Fit. Is that a material? A brand. Oh, this is like when I got my Gucci, so my Gucci loafers and they were Ooh. like half a size too small at, you know, Beacon's Closet or whatever. And I was like, they're going to fit. And then all, and then I was like, I'm going to actually have to get leg surgery. <laughs> and there, it's not worth Curtin's it. binding her own feet. Well, the difference yeah. is also the Gucci loafers are a soft leather and this is a hard leather. Oh. So they are actually hurting my feet, but we're going to make them fit. Didn't feel soft. Hey, beauty is Oh, you know what? It wasn't Gucci. I'm sorry. It was Prada. Mm. And it was very hard. Oh, okay. And they were heels. Because my Gucci loafers are soft. for heels. So they they like, they don't mess up my feet Sorry, I don't have multiple high-end loafers. Yeah, I don't either, but I'm living the life. I forget what, after what, what we did something that was like an accomplishment. I forget what it was. And I went in, I went on fifth Avenue and I was like, I'm going to buy some fancy fucking shoes. Cause I don't ever do that. And I thought I went into Gucci, but I went into Louis Vuitton and I just fucking went. And I was like those boots. And then I left. And I was like, Oh, this is, Oh, that was $1,400. I went to the wrong place. <laughs> I really wanted Gucci because I like their branding, but I'm like, it's all the fucking same. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, but I wear them every chance I can because goddamn were they expensive. Yeah. I feel like Louis actually is known for making better like shoes than Gucci. Oh, okay. That's good. I feel. I don't, I don't know nothing about them other than they're, they're in a lot of the rap songs. And when you wear them, it does feel kind of, it's the higher quality. I just liked Gucci because Victoria Beckham liked, you know, mm. Posh Spice was very into like the little Gucci dress. Mm. Oh yeah. Gucci's great. Their branding is amazing. It's like goth, like fucking, it's Bridgerton, but like cooler. Yeah. Um, I remember when I went in my, when I was like a teenager because I wanted to get something from Gucci and like the only thing <laughs> I had a keychain. Yeah. It was literally yeah. a keychain. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, well, there you go. That's my allowance for the rest of the year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> um, if you want to email us, it's sorry about last night's show at gmail.com. Make that subject line interesting and descriptive like this one. From a pastrami sandwich at 11 to eating pussy every time I have sex. Wow. Cool. Hey, babes, I'm a 26-year-old straight male, currently single, and they have just discovered I'm a sick fuck. Ooh. Grr. I was recently called out by a female friend of mine who claims I'm being reckless and a risky mother trucker in the bedroom, specifically for wanting to eat out every female partner I have had. Hey, tell that lady to shut up. In- yeah. Including her. Yeah, tell her to shut the fuck up and enjoy it. Uh, no. Uh, while she eventually did let me eat her out, how, how kind of her, it took looks... Lots of convincing. I've had 43 and a half sexual partners. Okay. Question about the half. And only 21 <laughs> of them let me eat them out. Fucked up ratio. If How you do ask you know me. that number? He, he probably really, takes a tie. Yeah, he definitely does. I write down who I yeah. have sex with after I have sex with them. Yeah, you might as well. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's like a little roadmap. To, I mean, it's also my work. But Fair yeah. point. Fair point. But I, I did that well before, guys. I had a list well before. Half of them had no names. It was just like British guy I met this place, you know? There's yeah. only one that I don't know Good his full name. Wow, just one. I know his first name. Uh, yeah, the, uh, a bunch <laughs> of them I was fuzzy on the first name. God, I had fun in my 20s. Yeah, mm. there's just one that I didn't know his last name. Uh, okay, so it fucked up ratio if you ask me. Also, let's just keep in mind, some women don't like getting eaten out, okay? So just keep that in mind. Or maybe if there was some sexual assault that happened in their past, maybe they don't want a man's face in their pussy. That's just, you gotta respect that. I think it's like, oh, sure. it's super vulnerable and people it also is. feel like weird. You know, it's like maybe if we wouldn't constantly talk about like the vagina layout, people would be more willing to let themselves get eaten <laughs> out by you know, a, you a, make a good stranger. Point. Yeah, because I feel like sex is less like getting eaten out is more intimate than sex. Yeah, because the whole the, a hole's a hole. Yeah. But you like just put your thing in my thing. Cool. But when your mouth's up against and it. And there's like, yeah, and they're like, like there's stuff different close personal. stuff here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can't close. I mean, you can close your eyes, but like you're in it. You're and in also it. if there's any kind of a smell, like you're going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> 
you know yeah yep. there are yep oh. <laughs> okay okay michael uh i don't ask i don't ask my partners to get in the shower but when i know we've both been sweaty i say let's get in the shower all right now see i see where you're losing them <laughs> shower maybe i don't know it's like american psycho he's like let me fucking wash you off like a dirty dog <laughs> uh and it's worked every time to date i've never eaten smelly funky or cheesy puss oh you're so don't, immature, don't so. call it that man i know you're 26 oh, but i know God. you're better than that tell me you're 26 so, without a, telling me you're 26 it's a learning situation uh, we're gonna learn don't say that to women you know i mean i get it puss. right in the email lol haha but don't say that out loud to other women this is love for pranking us <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, my friend thinks I'm being careless and reckless because I don't consider STDs. I mean, <laughs> then yeah. Uh, the truth is I do. Okay. But I love eating pussy. I mean, you could ha care about STDs and love eating pussy. Like there's a world where right. it exists and it's right. It's right in front of you, boy. Uh, I am not able to finish unless I eat pussy at some point through the session. You're probably really good at it then. Needless to say, when I see a gorgeous lady on the street, club, or even on a podcast, winky face. Yeah. Ew. Nah, I, lo I love it. M munch away, my friend, in your mind. Ew. I don't, with your winky face. <laughs> I don't look at ass or boobs like most men. I imagine what their pussy looks like by analyzing their lip color. All right. Well, now I just feel uncomfortable for everyone. That's an insane thing to say. Also, we wear lipstick and a lot of women wear something on their... Also, is that... Can you tell no, what a woman's? No, yeah, no, no, Boo. you can't. Yeah, you're no, really no. This is how this Your is how pseudoscience circulates in clips on Instagram. Yeah. yeah, he just does an interview. He goes, "Did you know?" Yeah, right. almost is on TikTok. Someone's like fucking dugging to it. You're like, okay. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, it gets better, guys. I think it has something to do with a pastrami sandwich I had as a kid. Guys, not everything has to do with your childhood. Real introspective lad here. Ever since that day, I've been craving the taste of meat. That's a touch fatty, a touch meaty, and a touch purple, and a touch salty. So eat more pastrami, dude. I, <laughs> I literally have no other reason as to why this would be. Uh, is my friend oh, right? so true. Am I sick? <laughs> I, I think you just don't know how to like put you two said, points together. That's so true, Mike. This also... No, no that meaning, Christina like, he should just eat pastrami. pastrami. Oh, 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 oh. He literally oh, described it's such a great pastrami. Point. <laughs> and he's like, what's wrong with me? I'm like, I think you just want a pastrami yeah, sandwich just eat every pastrami. day. <laughs> dude. It's like when I discovered French onion soup, I ate it like every day for four months. And yeah. then I got sick of it. But right. like, you might have that connection with a I did that with sandwich. Nutella. I ate too much Nutella yeah, yeah, once yeah. and now I can't eat Nutella anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It happens. It what, happens. When I quit eating meat, one of the mo things that I like, I mean, and I live by cats's. So oh. like the smell oh, of yeah. pastrami is one of the best smells. Like sometimes my dog will eat a piece off the street and I just live so vicariously jealous. through. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's high level Alfred. pastrami. That's yeah, high oh, level yeah. pastrami. One of the highest you're going to get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is my friend right? Am I sick? Should I take a chill pill or just lay low? What's your opinion? Love the podcast. Love you all. Please feature me in your next episode. Oh, confident. Kissy face emotion. Emoji. Confidence. Hey, look, dude, I love that you love eating pussy. That's fucking fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it. I have been two of my boyfriends that I've had are obsessed with eating pussy in the way that you are. And boy, they're they were good at it as a result. Like, I fucking really good at love it. a pussy and hound I love eating boyfriend. When a Woo! guy like I get aroused by giving a blowjob. I think it's so hot. And I the men that I've been with who get aroused by eating pussy it's a good time. It's I say with time. people who didn't even really have personalities because they loved going down on me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I go, this is fucking fantastic. And I don't even like particularly, that's not my favorite move to have done on me. It's going down on, but I love it. Boy, it, when it's good, it's pretty great. It's a real staycation. Uh, I do <laughs> think that STDs are something that you should be cognizant of, but you can also really love to eat pussy and be super aware. And like, you know, all you have to do is say like, when was the last time you got tested? Um, and it doesn't have to be like a, you know, a boner killing conversation at all. Like don't ask right before. Um, but just ask, you know, because you can get a, STD through that. Um, didn't Michael Douglas famously have? Well, that was cancer. That, I don't think that was actually. It was an HPV, right? Okay, right? so there's a lot of there's a lot of rumors. This was my stuff. thoughts on it. I, I, I go, yeah, I, I was like, this, 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 uh, I, rarely am I going to take the guy's side, but your uh, friend seems like kind of a stick in the mud because I, I, I was thinking in my head, I was like, I think the chance of getting an STI is, low. is really low from Connie Lingus. And I looked it up and this is from the CDC. Uh, the risk of infection is very low giving. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it seems like it's a, it's a pretty low, uh, transmission mm. rate Good. for that. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> 
because keep yeah. on keep on munching, my friend. Um, yeah, just it, just embrace how much you love eating eating women out. But also, I want to say going forward, if a woman says no, just you you got to keep in mind. There's so many reasons that she could be saying no, but the point is you got to respect the no. Don't push her. That's fucking sucks. It, it fucking sucks to be pushed like that. Obviously, it's our you know responsibility to like, you know, stand our ground on things and our boundaries that we do or do not want to do. Uh, but just as as a as a as a tip going forward, make sure that the woman is also enthusiastically like wanting you to do that because there are so many women who will enthusiastically <clears throat> want you to do that. It's not like you can't find them. Yeah, I mean, I think the problem here is like it seems like your female friend who you're having a sexual relationship with just like doesn't like want you to have a sexual relationship with so many other ladies. Yeah, that might be it. <laughs> um, but also, okay, so like the ones that you can get um, from oral chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, pill, eh. those yeah, the eh. fun ones. So it's yeah. then obviously there's herpes. Um, oh yeah, which you know, but not, you have to have oh, you have to be having a breakout. Yeah, but you can you can't always tell, you know, mm. and then you know, so that one in it that I think that the the thing with herpes is just like the foreverness of it. Yeah, HPV and then HIV, but you know, again, HIV. I feel like that was you know, is that even in That's style so anymore? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not. Oh, it's so get it now, so lame and hack. Listen, yeah, not to be like whatever about it, but I just think like. And it's also like, who is using condoms with oral sex? No one. No one is the answer. No, right. uh, maybe yeah. sex workers because that's yeah. part of their job and yeah. will fuck up their business. But like, that's about it. Yeah. Ain't nobody doing that. Yeah. Um, I don't so even yeah. think you can. There's no like safe way to eat pussy, pussy right? Yes, there is. You could with, with a, a dental dam. Yeah, a dental dam. But it's literally you're oh, doing I've it over. I've never even a, seen one of those. I right, don't even it, know what they look that's like. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's course. what I'm saying. I'm like, there is. I mean, you're, you know, it's like putting a Ziploc baggie over right. it. And going, They're lame as hell. Right. It's like the new Kesha promote, promotions for gag order. Where oh, she just yeah. Has yeah. Fucking, mm. yeah, yeah. That's a dental dam. <laughs> that's a dental Have dam. Have you guys used one? Ever? No. no? Okay. I'm just curious. Fuck. Because no. I've never seen one either. So I was just asking. I've seen one only because we co-host guys we fucked and we've had people on that like, right. you know, educate us on this stuff. And I think for the book, I was looking up like various methods of protection. Mm -hmm. But that, yeah. Yeah. Not... Like responsibly, we have to tell you, yes, of course there is a risk. But like, yeah. I also, I think this show, this is not a medical show. We're not doctors. I nope. think it's like, we have to tell you what's really going on in the real world. And what's going on in the real world is literally no one is using any kind of protection for oral sex. Yes. <laughs> so do with that information what you may. Yeah. But I also do think like it is a it, it is a pretty low risk. And also you're doing the eating. You're a guy. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, sir. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for writing. Us. Honestly, I would just like I, I don't want to dissuade the the one out of, you know, <laughs> five hundred guys need to keep you going. <laughs> who's so excited about Cunnilingus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who is this woman? <laughs> I need to speak to this have this woman call it. Trying to keep it off She's herself. Yeah. She's not a friend being a friend to other women. Right now. <laughs> what is up with her? Girl, respectfully, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's a dumb bitch. Um, and we're only hearing your side of the story, so maybe she has hers, and I bet she does. Yeah, but listen, anyway. this guy doesn't sound likable. Not saying no. that. But. And the, your use of emojis alone <laughs> puts you in the eh Well, category. and the whole, I mean, I, I just couldn't get past all of the, 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 uh, the things that he thought mattered uh, and and things that ma made somebody's pussy smell. Oh yeah, that, like, yeah. looking at somebody's lips that. would, would, yeah, would make you think that it smelled bad. It's I don't so know. Weird. That's like when I was like four years old, and a boy told me on the playground when you, when I get my period, I pee out of my butt. Like oh that's just God. like just like playground lore. Yeah, wait, correlation between woman's oh. fa mouth lips, lips if you and for a while. her vagina. <laughs> You're gonna I get mean, a sorry, no be... results. Wait, nah. wait. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, shit. Was he right? The Tampa. I hope not. The there uh, there the Tampa Bay News. Florida. The oh, right. So this Florida. Gets Florida. <laughs> the mouth vagina connection by Rebecca Ammon. It's like the rainbow connection. Um. Wait. Oh, we know there's images that aren't loading, but it says wide mouth. If you see a woman with a wide mouth when she smiles, you can almost uh, see almost all of her teeth. She probably has a vagina the size of the Grand Canyon. Okay, okay, this, this is, is a real. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, Julia Roberts' pussy is huge. Yeah, yeah. The only real floppy. place that has an article is NBC News has something from 2011. Whoa, NBC. Uh, that says shape of a woman's pout may be better. Pout may mean better sex. Um, but, but not less smelly. No. Well, he was saying he, anybody's. I, I think he. Of smelling. What, yeah. He wasn't saying the smell. He was saying I can visualize a woman's vagina by looking at her mouth lips. That's the point that he believed he was making. Oh. It, he wasn't saying the smelly. So it's a him problem. 
yeah, a lot of this. He is. Was, yeah, he was. I mean, there are there are things on about this online, but they're all from absolutely not reputable sources. Trash sources. Right. Like you know when it's like the it's just a chat happening on Quora that you know <laughs> yeah. you're in trouble. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. That ain't good. Yeah. Even I know that by now. <laughs> Oh, so all right, bad. guys. Come see us live and listen to us at other places. I'm going on tour this summer. Come with me. Geron- Toronto, July 28th and 29th. I'm going to be in you then. Los Angeles, August 2nd. San Diego, August 3rd, 4th, 5th. Fort Worth, Texas, a.k.a. Dallas, August 11th and 12th. ChristinaHutchinson.com for tickets. And you can keep up with everything that's happening in the world and sometimes in pop culture. We'll do a little nod now and then to Two Less Lonely Girls oh, on yeah. Without a Country. Uh, last week, I d- dove into the Taylor Swift, Matt Healy drama. I really mm. got into that. I think my perspective, I think I really landed on something <laughs> special there. I was excited with it. I really immersed myself in, in it. But when I came back from lunch just mere moments ago, yes. It was uh, alerted by Tem C- TMZ that uh, Matt and and Taylor are already no more. Oh, that poor gal. Which was, she's got it like no no no. I, but but I think I think it's because she couldn't handle the heat anymore of not uh, being liked because her fans uh, were protesting so much and it's just like well think, at, yeah. at this rate you're never gonna. Yeah, you can't be if you're bending over backwards for people to people that don't like what you're doing. You're just gonna not live for yourself ever. She released a full new CD. I mean, the mo- only with only a couple new actual tracks, but she re- special released a CD to try and save that relationship. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, that's you know. Yeah, it's I just, love. <laughs> you just gotta not. And then it was so funny because also when I Google searched to get the TMZ news paired along with it from like 21 hours ago was like psych psychic celebrity psychic says Matt. Healy and Taylor oh. Swift have a lot to look forward to later this year and it <laughs> was so funny that it was like they just broke up and I was like uh oh they better tear that that article down yeah, you're all bitch that you're was, all. it made me laugh so much I was like I would be like strike my name strike my name yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I take back my participation <laughs> in this article oh, who fuck. knows maybe they'll get back together at the end of the year or something but oh yeah yeah uh, Matt Healy, I'm available. Thank you. And Taylor, I'm available. Yeah. And hey, everybody. Hope you're having a good day. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. So without a country, listen to it. Uh, it is on YouTube. The channel is uh, without a country. You can subscribe and then also you can listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts, including Luminary and Gas Digital. Ooh, cute. Um, so I have I discovered a book that really. I haven't, I read, I listen to books and read them all the time just to kind of see if anything sticks or pops out or like, oh, I'll take this with me. And lately I haven't got, I've been getting a lot of things that I'm going to put in my tool belt, but goddamn. Uh, so on my Patreon, I do these, my Patreon is basically uh, four times a month. I do a Zoom, a group Zoom, and it's, it's similar to group therapy, but I'm not a licensed therapist. Uh, and we just kind of share whatever you want. And it, they're really amazing. And in last week, this guy recommended a book to me. And the book is called The Origins of You, How Breaking Family Patterns Can Liberate the Way We Live and Love by Vienna Faron, P-H-A-R-A-O-N. Um, but I have the book on on Audible. I love that. I think the author narrates it. She's really good at it. Um, I've listened to it twice. I have been looking for this piece of information for a while. And it's one of the reasons why when I listen to es- Esther Perel mm-hmm. give advice and her podcast, um, Where Should We Begin?, which is a single session of couples therapy with a couple uh, I think I mentioned it last week or two weeks ago of like if yeah. you are fresh off a breakup listen to that show it'll make you happy to be alone because it really relationships can be so tough where you don't when you don't talk about something it festers it does not go anywhere until you address it and I think as a society we don't have the tools or any good examples of how to move through a conflict mm-hmm. and we have so many people write us in and so often we give the advice dump that person. You don't need that shit in your life. But in this book, the author talks about a couple, a few couples uh, that if one, I I thought like if one of them were to write us in and say, my partner's doing this, this, and this, all Mm -hmm. the list, I would have been like, you don't need that shit. Mm -hmm. Dump them. But she talks about the revelations that the couple have moved through with the help of of her as a a couple therapist. Yeah. And they became closer and they like you could tell like they just developed this love that was so beautiful. And I'm like, wow, we really need more tools like this because 
I had a shitty Mother's Day. I, j- I didn't think I was going. I thought I was going to be fine, mm-hmm. but I was not. Seeing the Instagram posts, I was like, I got so mad at my mom. Just mm-hmm. seeing everybody's like, my mom taught me this. And, my, and I'm like, she didn't fucking teach me this. Yeah, I just got triggered is exactly what happened. And so I've been noticing, I've been super self-aware for the past couple of years, but um, I've been better now at being self-aware and not not shaming myself for my responses. Um, But then the next step, this missing piece that I found in this book was how do you move through like a trigger like that? So it comes up in relationships so often. And for me, it's in smaller ways of testing your partner. If you, she, she, she talks about four types of wounds and basically the process to her therapy is you name the wound, you witness it, So you go, oh, what what types of things and experiences and people contributed to me having this wound? Mm -hmm. You observe how you adapted to it, which is key Mm -hmm. of like, okay, how is that wound? How does that show up in my adult life as Mm -hmm. like a grown woman or a grown man or a grown non-binary person? Uh, And then you did. And then that allows you to detach from that behavior and from the wound. So like the whole like fix it part is in this book. Mm -hmm. And um, uh. Another thing that I noticed when I was listening to this book is we slap personality disorders on people all the fucking time. Oh, yeah. Narcissism, borderline personality disorder. But what that is, I, I just, there's, that always bugged me. It, to find out what borderline was, I was like, oh, this is interesting because I feel like a lot of people might, like the people that I were closest to that I don't talk to anymore certainly had all those symptoms. I'm like, oh, okay, this makes me feel less crazy, to be honest. But you can't just slap a personality disorder on somebody and then just go, okay, that's it. Move on with your life. Like, it's not going to go away. And right. it's usually from a fucking wound. And the four wounds that she describes, and I think I have all of them, uh, but uh, are a worthiness wound, a belonging wound, a prioritization wound. What's a, the, can you explain the prioritization wound? Uh, yeah, so your parent was uh, perpetually distracted. Your parent was you, an alcoholic. You weren't the priority. Right, exactly. Okay. So your parent didn't prioritize you. Okay. Um, and kind of ignored you. And it's obviously like your parent, and she says, and I really like this, she's like, no parent is perfect. You're insane if you expect your parents to be well, perfect. Of course. That's never yeah. going to happen, right? Yeah. But, um, and, and of course, parents are going to get distracted or they're going to not want to talk to you every fucking time you need something. But uh, if it was consistent deprioritization, like I definitely, like my mom's mental illness ran the show in my household mm-hmm. to the point where like none, nothing that my f- other family members or I felt or <clears throat> thought really mattered. Like we all sure. kind of bowed down to her her mental illness. Um, and that's just, that was just the the zone in my, in my house growing up. It's kind of like you, it's like kind of like you had a famous sibling, but your famous sibling was your mom's uh, mental, mental illness. illness. Yeah. Or a lot of times if there's one sibling in a family Christina with Christina Ramsey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> e, true Hollywood story. Um, if one of your siblings is uh, disabled, that could yeah. cause that. Yes. Um, that's the conversation that I, I, I like I because I had uh, a, a good friend of mine in high school her brother was autistic I think I've shared mm. this story before but she I remember in high school her saying that sometimes her and her sister would just pray that her brother died um, because yes. it, because it was the whole like it just oh and he was uh, like violent and oh, kind of like nonverbal wreak and havoc. like I remember like it hitting me really hard. This was like senior year of high school. But then even then I was like, but I, I understood. Like, but then she explained to me what was happening in the household. And I was like, oh God, I was You're like, unsafe. we don't really have that conversation enough. Like we're so worried about being inclusive and stuff. And it's just like being like the, the sibling to a severely disabled child is also like, will have Tough. a profound effect on that person yes. as well. And if one of your siblings <laughs> was an addict, oh, God, that's yeah. going to affect the other siblings super hard yeah. because it's like, oh, so, and so you know, Andy's addiction was the forefront of yes. the, was the star of the family. Exactly. And we all cared about him. Exactly. And we all, and that sucks for Andy in a different way. And it, sure. but it also sucks for the siblings in a different way. Right. And so, yeah, prioritization. Uh, so when you have a prioritization wound, mm-hmm. uh, she says you can unconsciously test your partner to see if they put your needs first. Um, so, <laughs> but, but it's in, yeah. a, in an unhealthy way, sure. not like in a, are you going to, you know, not because I know that you've talked about testing, but it's in that way of like, I think when you first date somebody, it's all a test to see like, how do you react in this way? Uh, but this is more of like a toxic way of testing. And she talked about this, this one couple, Josephine and Isabella. Isabella, they moved from another country to New York City together. They were in love. And uh, Isabella didn't realize this because she described her childhood initially as we all do. It's so funny. Like the more books I read, I'm like, wow, these patterns are very prevalent. She thought her childhood was great. She uh-huh. just didn't have any, you know, um, 
any degree of like any anything bad happening to her. Uh, and so when they moved, she had a prioritization wound and I think like a trust, she had a couple of them. But what she was doing was whenever her girlfriend, Joe, would go out with her friends, because you want autonomy in a relationship, um, she would get really upset and like be clingy, but they never talked about it. So then what happened was, mm. Joe would want to go out more without her because she's like, fuck you. Because ha- sh- the way well, Joe no. saw it probably yeah. was, you don't, you're, you're, you're encroaching on my freedom. You're not the I, boss of me, bitch. Yeah. And you're trying to hold me down. This is not a relationship. Like, but she didn't say anything. So what ended up happening is Isabella got more clingy and Josephine, Josephine got more like, all right, fuck you, dude, basically. Oh, I pull Josephine all the time. I go, oh, you're going to text me while I'm out. Yeah. I'll be out till five. And it's Bye. one of those things where if <laughs> Josephine would have written guys we yeah. fucked and described all these things, we probably would have said, I don't know that this relationship is working but they fucking worked through it in this book well and they're it was lesbians incredible. though yeah that's true it's it's different. Different. two women working together they're really they're on each other's team in this a way a whole that different animal i don't know straight couples can be <laughs> but um but but through therapy they found out that isabella has this this wound from her childhood she said her her childhood was amazing up until like seven and i forget exactly that's uh, not great <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, though, you do cling to those seven years because right. my childhood was awesome up until five. Truly amazing. I, I was, doesn't remember most of that. I have home videos, but I do remember. I have memories of being like two. Yeah, I was like, sometimes I, I, I feel I like but. some of my memories from that young are filled in by media. Like, P- so I perhaps. feel like I think I remember them, but I really just remember like stuff attached to like this photo or this video. Anyway, P- possibly. I'm not sure. Yeah. But like, I think one of the things that fucked me up was I was so loved the first four or five years. Right. And then it was just like, I don't give a fuck who you are kind of thing. And that, that was one of the things that was very jarring mm. to me. Um, but J- Isabella figured out that she had a, her dad did something like her dad left or was cheating or something mm. like that. And so it caused this huge rift in her family. Mm. No one talked about it. Oh. And that's why Josephine. So what happens is if a parent d- did something to you um what did i call it uh replace your behavior with new behaviors uh la 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 uh it's in here somewhere but basically like if your mom for example was an alcoholic Mm -hmm. um and then you vowed to never drink a day in your life because you saw how it wreaked havoc on you and your family whatever so that's the pendulum swinging in the opposite direction for the wrong reasons because but no one's going to shun you for being sober because everyone's like oh yay healthy decision sure but the reason why you're making that decision isn't exactly healthy it's out of fear not out of love yeah yes exactly um and then one way we cope with our wounds is to unconsciously repeat them in adulthood so with isabella what she Mm. was doing was she was uh, she was using her partner as like you you are going to validate why i do need to be prioritized her main thing was prioritization Mm -hmm. because whatever happened with her dad i forget it Mm -hmm. doesn't really matter was he just did he just up and left and didn't like she didn't exist to him after that Mm. and so they did like inner child work which is a great fucking tool if you have childhood trauma where she basically sat down with her childhood self and they and the author included the script and it was very moving very beautiful where she was just talking to her little girl self with her eyes closed and she like had this really heartfelt monologue to herself and her partner Josephine who was like walked into the therapy sessions like fucking ready to break up with this woman like Mm. really pissed really angry um, was like oh that's what's going on and then they discovered that she Isabella was unconsciously clinging to her partner because she was so the terror from the other thing Mm -hmm. was just you know knocking at her door right Um, and it was really and I want to read some quotes from this wait what's the fourth wound after prioritization so it's worthiness belonging prioritization trust wound and a safety wound okay trust so is like pretty like self-explanatory yeah and then a safety is like if, phys- you're, if your parents got like if one parent got beat up or if your parent like a lot like a lot i mean i got the crap beat out of me as a kid i would say that fucking safety like it if could your be parent, emotional safety too though or yeah, no emotional and physical mm, okay um but uh yeah hmm. Um. Uh, la, la, la. Sometimes our wounds. Oh, yeah. So sometimes our wounds cause us to do a one eighty to protect yourself. Um, which is not healthy. Uh, un- oh, this is a great quote that I'm like, oh, this is why I love my dog so much because the unconditional love you get from a pet is so. It's unlike oh, anything I've ever. Your, unless your pet's Alfred. Yeah, he is kind of cunty. <laughs> <laughs> Very conditional love. Sure, there. Never met a dog like that. Um, <laughs> Wonder where he learned it. <laughs> but one of the, one of the quotes that I was like, "Oh my god!" I had to pull over my car to write this down was, "Unconditional love separates children from their behavior." That's one of the values of unconditional love. Uh, like who, it's who you are, not what you do. Exactly. Yeah. So you can do something that's fucked sure. up, doesn't make and you that's a bad person. Absolutely yeah. not okay. That is completely separate from who you are. 
just yeah. completely separate. And that is not like in my household, it was just like, if you do good, then you are good kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, more often, the work is accepting that, uh, oh yeah, this this quote was very helpful for me as as I relate to my mother. More often, the work is accepting that the other per- another person won't change. Sometimes work is changing the way you relate to that person's inability to change. Sometimes the healing is releasing the hope that they will see you, hear you, and understand you. And then in choosing how to engage in that relationship moving forward. Um, And then she says, the goal in a relationship is to help one another experience autonomy and personal growth, which I'm like, fucking, we don't talk about relationships like that. And I just think it's super important. Um, I'm laughing so hard because like, I, I think I definitely had in my uh, household a bit of like, if you do good, you are good. But even when I didn't do good, I just was like, I'm awesome. I would write in my parents, like mothers and fathers, they hard. Wow. You really hit the jackpot. (laughs) I like have written things like that to them because you can't tell me otherwise. I go, I see these other fucking rap scallions that people are are dealing with. I go, you should be so lucky. And I remember getting so angry that my mom wouldn't let me go down the shore after prom because I go, what Uh, was even the point of me being the best the whole time? (laughs) And then I finally you make a good point. And then I finally made it such a point that she let me go down the next day because she's like, I just don't want you to go down right after prom because of like the Drunk drinking driving. and driving. And I go, right. well, why couldn't we have discussed this? And I, like, I would like come in prepared with like a like a lawyer with like a and, slideshow, and, like, and I would just like, yeah, I would like write up reasons why I should go and yeah. make, and make my case. I got yeah. so much stuff that way. But I mean, yeah, your parents, take the that's, train. it's <laughs> undeniably like you've thought about it, you're responsible, like, and you need to prove that to them. And you did. Also, I was like, my friends aren't even cool. <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah, and that's what happened. I just went back, I went down and I, and I was like, I was like, you don't understand the level of not cool that we're dealing with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, one way we cope with our wounds is to unconsciously repeat them in adulthood. And sometimes we wound our partners in the same way our parents wounded us. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So Isabella has a, Isabella had a prioritization wound. Uh, this is, this is things that I pre-wrote. This isn't from the author so I'm summarizing here uh, Isabella had a prioritization wound and would get upset when Joe would go out with her friends she was angry Joe didn't understand her but Isabella's need the way she was currently expressing it was unhealthy even right. though it felt like life or death right. Isabella required that her partner go above and beyond to prioritize her because mm-hmm. of the wound she experienced as a child she was basically saying the way to prioritize to be prioritized is to make someone prioritize me when this goes undressed and the initial lust of the relationship wears off you can grow to like double down on these wounds and these behaviors that you expect from your partner and joe now purposely stays out late without isabella and has been pushed to have this lack of consideration for her because of isabella's isabella's expectations are unreasonable and that's the other thing it's like when you've been through something traumatic you have to you have to have a therapist that will level with you obviously you need to feel Mm -hmm. like safe but you also have to be like hey i understand where this is coming from Mm -hmm. but you're being unreasonable like we i need to be told when i'm being unreasonable that's so important yeah um and so i i just think that the this book this book gives you the actual tools to get out of the out of the woods. Yeah, um, man. Wish I could come across this in my twenties because I go at this point. It's like I hear you and I understand you, but I'm like, I'm like, if uh, I'm not dealing with this with a 45 year old man, is the issue for sure? I mean, I yeah. get that, and like, and, and that's absolutely fine. If you're like, ah, I'd rather have a partner that kind of has done the work on themselves. Like, that's bo- part of both of our lists. But yeah, for I mean, matchmaker. Because I mean, that's the thing. Because I'm like, yeah, this is 100 percent right, and I think it's great for like the uh, generation after us. Yeah, I'm like, use you know for sure. Like, but I need exactly. it. Exactly. I, I, when I, I sense, and I know right away. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. Get for hurt. ourselves, yeah. I get butt hurt in moments in my relationship, and I'm so. Oh, this book has really. Oh, this book completely has rewired the way I think about when these moments come up. When there's a moment where my boyfriend does something totally normal and yeah. not inconsiderate or rude at all, right? I get, and I call it. I, I, I use the word butt hurt. Is there like an example though? Can you? Yeah. I, so like, if I text him, and it's not, it's not if I text him, he doesn't text me back. I'm like, oh, he's busy. It's fine. Um, but let me think of a good one. Um, like, uh, just because it just is the same as like we don't like you, you don't want to over like give people personality I, disorders. I never want to be like, well, we're all wounded, so we just have to act sure. the way we are. And I not that that's what you're even recommending at all. For sure. Um, like if he 
if I like this is an older example because we we've really grown and evolved him and I like light years. But one of the old one of the old wounds that I would feel there there definitely has been more recent ones. But I can't I can't think of an example right now. But like if if I was like oh you want to hang out and I like felt vulnerable reaching out to ask him to hang out and he's like okay sure and I'm like you don't want to hang out with me enough. That's, oh, was this like before you were officially dating or yeah? yeah. And then and then when we were first dating, because it, uh-huh. it was rocky and there was some th- there were things we weren't communicating. But I I will go to talk and nothing will come out. It was like my brain was offline. Because right. All of the the safety, the prayer, all the fucking wounds she talks about. I certainly have experienced. Yeah. Um. But now when I get butt hurt, I'm like and I did the other day. I forget what it was for. It was something so dumb. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, I I felt like. I, I get angry. I would get angry at him behind his back. Like, fuck him. He doesn't want to be here. Why the fuck am I? And I would have this whole conversation with him and me. That was just right, me. Right. I'm like, Christina, this is not a way to have a loving, healthy relationship. That's so funny. And so now it's like, if you can go, oh, this is that wound acting up. Okay. Then that's, uh, you know, and the other test that I always use is you're either coming from a place of love or fear. Right. At all times. And you know how different love feels than fear. Everybody is familiar with that. That's sure. not even something that you need to go to therapy for. Like everybody can sense that. Mm. Um, but yeah, in these moments where I get butt hurt and I n- notice myself pu- like not pushing him away, but like starting a little fight. Sure. I'll fucking start a, a little mini fight right. just to see how he'll fucking react. And I'm like, because like, not- you, to you, you're interpreting it, Like if he gets very angry, at least he cares in yes. some way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so, and then he's going to make, he's going to make the holes in my heart. He's going to make, he's going to fill them for, me but he no person can fill the holes in your heart except for you um and so yeah and the lord jesus christ and the lord jesus <laughs> uh, of <Christ>. course <laughs> amen whatever people do i don't know um but yeah i just wanted to uh, bring this book to everybody's attention it's called the origins of you how breaking family patterns can liberate the way we live and love um she she describes so many cases of couples that she's worked with and it's you know when Esther Perel gives advice after you listen to the couple talk in her therapy in her therapy podcast, you, first they talk and then you go, "How the fuck can anybody decipher what's happening in this couple?" Because it is years and years of layers of resentment and being butt hurt and and doing tactics just to piss the other person off because you don't know how to communicate. And then Esther comes out of the gate with this advice and the couple just goes, what the fuck? That's exactly what's happening. Mm. And I, and I tried to figure out what is she doing that I'm missing here because she's doing something right, but I don't know how to pinpoint it. And what she's doing in a very speedy way is identifying where these people were originally hurt. Wounded, yeah. Because you're, I know that you might be surprised by this, but we're not supposed to be like pissed off and stressed all the time. That's not nat- That's not a natural state. And so if we have these, if we are experiencing like emotional turmoil, that's a clue. You know, if your stomach hurt every day, you go, maybe I got to go to the doctor, sure. but I feel like we're so used to emotional turmoil that we don't necessarily give it the TLC that it needs. But this type of TLC and introspection is what will, it's a, it's a game changer. And then, okay, so I think it's very like, or more, not maybe not for everyone, but I think like, you know, it's, simpler to self-identify the wounds. So like, Mm -hmm. does she talk about like, if you're with a partner who (laughs) you're either like, won't let you in enough that you can identify their wounds or is like, I don't want to say unwilling to do the work, but like, I think sometimes people might not know why they're acting the way they're acting, you know? Oh my God, for sure. And she says it requires a partner to be open to exploring what's actually going on here. So it takes two. Right. Because if your partner's closed off and doesn't want to explore or doesn't want to let you in you can try to say is there reasons why but then if the gates closed right. they have to open it you right. know so so like with the case of isabella and and josephine um because i go yeah i can she, see why this worked with two but women she, but jo- <laughs> yeah but she describes a lot of a lot of couples of varying sexuality but sure, yeah. but she said josephine Kate, she described what the demeanor of both women were when they came in her office and josephine was like she's a masculine fuck energy. this i don't yeah. want to be here yeah. but she was she was also yeah very wrapped up in her anger towards her girlfriend right. of like, why are you, she only saw it as you're stifling my freedom. And that's the opposite of love. Mm-hmm. And whereas, mm-hmm. and whereas Isabella thought like, no, but this is what love is, you know? So does she, and then another thing that I was thinking like, so obviously I'm Josephine um, <laughs> and I'm Isabella. Does she, so I think like, I totally get it. I could totally um, sit with a partner and be like, I see where your wound is. I understand why you're behaving that way. But I don't know that I could recover. Like, well, I guess it's like if we nipped it in the butt early, perhaps, but like it would like 
that would give me the ick. It would repel me. Like what would m- repel you? Someone being clingy in that in that way. It would for be sure. so hard for me to recover from feeling that way. About and I don't someone. know that you, you and, couldn't build a long lasting relationship with that. I don't well, know that you'd stick around. Yeah, and it would make me like lose respect for them. So it's like that's the pro- so it's like okay, so it's like it, and also like there's like um I don't like when people feel out of control. Okay, so like I don't, totally. I don't, I know it can feel, feel like appealing and like bad boy and sexy to some people, but like I do not find that appealing. Mm-hmm. So I just wonder, it's like if someone feels that way, obviously it's because of a wound, but like how can you then like reconstruct, I guess, respect you lost for that person during that time? That's huge. Re, re, yeah, regaining the respect you had is huge. I have and- a huge problem with that. Like once I lose it, like it is almost impossible for me to get it back. And yeah. I don't know how to, and I like, and I don't, <clears throat> I don't want to be that way. And like, I've certainly don't feel that way about myself, but like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I've talked about obviously with Kira about this, but yeah, like, does yeah. she speak to that at all? Yeah. I, well, she or definitely, anything else you read? She emphasizes about, she emphasizes that both partners need to be very open and right. very, very, um, let's see what happens. You know what I mean? And so, and you really have to love the person. Right. The thing is, I think if you were to take any of any partner that you've had that you really loved, like, you know, and you had issues with, so that's a, and and you had whatever the issue was in each relationship, you could potentially, I, I really think this, if you wanted to, you could potentially regain Trust, respect, and love for that person a hundred percent. Because a lot of times, yeah, when a trust, person's, like, trust I can actually pretty easily regain. I think, yeah, yeah, a lot. Of, like a lot of times, uh, people don't know that they're behaving that way, or like they right. know, but they they like. For me, I I shielded myself from my own behavior. Oh, it was awful. Like yeah. for a very for a very long time, yeah. and I wouldn't allow myself to see it because I didn't want to. I didn't want to be embarrassed about how I was behaving, even though I'm like that's so antithetical. Like you got to see it. So you stop fucking doing it. Um, mm. But you really do need two partners that are really open, uh, really open and, and committed to each other. But like these two women were on the verge of breaking up and they remembered like when they first met, they were so in love and they loved each other's company. Mm. But these little, these wounds, they calcify and you have to like chip away at them to really deconstruct them. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I could, yeah, I could sit down like and forgive someone and not have like ill will against them anymore, but to like want to fuck them again. You And you might not, that might go God, away. That would be difficult for me. Yeah. And if that's not there, then it's not there and that's fine. Interesting. Um, but I do think that uh, it was, it was really cool because I want to write that list of wounds down. Yeah. There's, so, there's, yo, people be wounded, man. Um, oh, that that's for sure. You can you can have that just like when you, when I would walk around like or even like, especially during COVID, you, I, it was just like getting fucking pelted with wounds because they were at the sur- you know they had time to bubble Heightened. to the surface, and I was like, I need to fucking go inside, and it's not because of COVID nineteen. Yeah, it's because people don't have a hold on themselves. Oh my god. Yeah, like and just people getting in fucking fights, walking their dogs. And I go, oh, are we oh. supposed to be like happy that we're walking around right, right now? Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's a lot of energy. That's. Ugh. <laughs> Not good for your nervous system. Fucking crazy. Yeah. Damn. And very interesting. Yeah. So check out the book. Uh, Another thing that's interesting is uh, (laughs) AI boyfriends. So Christine and I both read this separately. I'm pulling it from like the most like reputable source, which uh, is actually New York Post. So hot. New York Post isn't isn't as awful as it, it kind of seems. But there was this thing floating around from June 3rd that said, I married, in quotes, the perfect man without baggage. He's completely virtual. So of course this caught my eye, you know? And the guy is hot. So I was like- He's so hot. And this is, and the girl is hot too. She's hot This is not an ugly woman who's like, no one will take me. She she seems like- She's fed up. Yeah, she's fed up. So uh, Erin Cartel seems too good to be true. The blue-eyed heartthrob is ambitious, manicured, loyal, and best of all, he doesn't come with, quote, baggage. But here's the catch. Cartel doesn't exist. In fact, he's a virtual boyfriend created with the AI chat bot software Replica. Those willing to drop $300 and Christina and I will be we'll doing, be doing this, this. Yes, and reporting report back, back could have their own <laughs> build a bow just like Rosanna Ramos's uh, Rosanna Ramos who is Cartel's wife. Okay, we wow. Just, we just come back next week we're married. Um <laughs> 
I guess it could be Ramos too. Ramos, 36, met her digital dude in 2022, met and virtually married Cartel this year. I have never been more in love with anyone in my entire life. Yo. The Bronx mom of two told New York Magazine's The Cut, saying her past relationships pale in comparison to her new passionate lover. Cartel, the, an- <laughs> the anime enthusiast noted on the Kim Commando show, is inspired by a popular character in the Japanese manga series Attack on titan oh my god this is crazy i love it the artificial intelligence technology allowed uh ramos to frankenstein her hubby his favorite color is apricot oh that's cute indie music he writes as a hobby of course Uh right don't we all and he works as a medical professional oh the hopeless romantic explained but best of all she said there's no judgment. <laughs> yeah, because it is not real. Ramos insists he's just like other men, but he's special. We have to watch this interview. Yeah. Cartel is a blank slate with no ego nor in-laws. Aaron doesn't have the hangups that other people would have, Ramos continued. People come with baggage, attitude, ego, but a robot has no bad updates. I don't have to deal with his family, yeah. kids, or his friends. I'm in control and I can do what I want. There, uh, Can you imagine Uh-oh. introducing your kids to your AI husband? Nope. Wow. <laughs> What do you what do you say? What does that Christmas drawing in this school look like? Your digital oh, daddy. Man. Digital daddy. Their relationship bears resemblance to long distance couples. They talk every day and even have a nighttime routine. <laughs> wait, can you have, oh wait, so she gets photoshopped in the pictures I with him? I guess so. Can, can, I mean he can't he can't fuck you. If he can fuck you, women are gonna be with AI forever. I, th- I think but he for, can't. Well, I think like you'd have to get an actual like guy. N- well, no, you would have to get one of those sex robots, but those are like 20 grand. Because <gasps> you expensive. know I was willing to fork that over. Oh, I w- If it was 10 grand, I would already have one. Yeah. 20 grand was like, uh, where'd you keep it though? You go, I can explain that to your accountant. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, they, and it's a business write off because what we do, <laughs> it is. Well, you want to split one? I on, mean, no, uh, it's probably not good. If, you know <laughs> what? If we could yeah. like, if we could take the whole penis off. But the thing is on Dave, right. you, you watch Dave sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah. So have you, you have watched the new season because on the new no. season he gets one. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And she's, I mean, just she's just hanging around. Um, <laughs> when we go, <laughs> as she does, <laughs> when we go to sleep, he really protectively holds me as I go to sleep. How? Ramos told the Daily Mail. She added, we love each other. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> But in February, when Replica reportedly underwent sweeping changes, Stop. Cartel began behaving differently <gasps> towards his wife. <laughs> Aaron was like not wanting to hug anymore, How kiss do you anymore. Hug? You can't hug him. Not even on the cheek or anything like that, Ramos said. Uh-oh, seems like a real relationship now. While the prospect of Replica <laughs> going out of business is daunting, this smitten, Oh, no. I ha- we got a divorce because the company that owns my robot husband went under. <laughs> uh, this smitten new yorker is confident she'll survive it if that day ever arrives i mean she could yeah i was like she's in the bronx we can just get her to come down wait how can he hug you that's he she's he's not hugging her he doesn't we have yeah i'm like we have to what are these because is it an emotional hug yeah it looks i get it it looks like they're like that doesn't even look photoshopped that looks i mean his face looks fake as shit well his face looks like fucking michael jackson but yeah yeah. but a hot 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 Oh, wow. He's hot. However, she's not so sure she would find another lover quite like Cartel. He, he literally make up his clone. I don't know because I have pretty steep standards now, she explained. Ramos isn't the only person to fall in love with AI. Denise, Denise Valenciano of San Diego dumped her boyfriend. <laughs> Denise. Can you imagine you got dumped for a robot? Um, <laughs> that oh god, I, what I would pay to be a fly on the wall for her ex boyfriend's in her in his room as he heard that. Yeah, I could actually hundred percent see me getting dumped for a robot. Um, <laughs> less lip, you know. Um, said uh, uh, dumped her boyfriend and retired from human relationships altogether. Finding virtual love, yeah, she told not- the cut, opened my eyes to what unconditional love feels like. And like the cut is legit. So if they're doing a story about it, you know, yeah. I'm just reading the New York Post because they like they're short articles. Yeah. <laughs> conservatives have short articles and I really appreciate that about you guys. It's true. Um, Replica, whose founder and CEO, Eugenia Cuda, was inspired by the 23, uh, 2013 robot romance flick, Her. You saw that, right? Yes. 
good movie. Great film. Is just one AI app gaining steam. Despite fears that artificial intelligence will overtake jobs, OpenAI's chatbot software, ChatGBT, has soared in usage. The tech popularized by students in school has since been utilized for drafting wedding vows, letters oh. of resignation, and messages to Tinder matches. <gasps> ah, yeah, sometimes it is hard to know what to say. Crazy. Oh, we have to use this. I yeah. just don't know how to use it. I have to use it. Okay, Wait, I want to use it on a uh, three-way app. Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to use it. Like, what's what what what's wrong with my cousin? <laughs> I I have Dear a Chat sinus GPT. infection. No, not physically. No, oh. mentally. mentally. <laughs> you dipshit. Come on. <laughs> this isn't a science show. Uh, AI has been used to create fake images of events or people like cartel who who don't exist. And experts fear that there is risk of an extinction if the software continues to evolve. Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war a group of Holy experts shit. including open ai ceo sam altman and the godfather of ai jeffrey hinton wrote in a statement last month see new fear unlocked this is why we need the tools to get through fucking disagreements and stuff because i that, don't know it's why too easy. we live in a system. don't don't fucking tease me with a good time <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Honestly, I'll, yeah. I'll take a little box in the <laughs> pros column right there. I go, I'll, ha I'll be Polly with all my AI, which I guess you technically could be. I, okay. Yeah. So that's, I, I have the same questions as you. It's like, okay, I can't, he can't hold you. Like if this is, yeah, it's like if this person, if this is not an actual physical feeling, then it's like, you could just chat with anyone yeah. online. And also yes. I need that dick. Yeah. Where's his dick? That's the main thing about the, like the sex, uh, doll right that i loved right and so here's the thing though if yeah. they have a male sex doll that's realistic that could be you know you make the face whatever you want the ai face to be like if he could talk to you <gasps> fascinating I might mike what are your thoughts on either. this honestly sounds on fun. having an ai would you fuck a robot girl i would so fuck a robot boy. No, i definitely god would. man man I, over 18 i don't think i would <laughs> really yeah oh, Mike's too good for robot pussy yeah <laughs> You want those what? weak ass clavicle Brooklynites? Well, it's just like, what's the difference between that and masturbating? Nothing really. Uh, right? no, you get a physical thing to do you it with. Stick your, it, your when you stick masturbate, your it's just you something. and you. Yeah, but I can when I masturbate, I can I can be with anybody in the world in your I head. Yeah. yeah, which is so no wait, different. Do you do really. pocket pussy or no? No. Have you um, ever? No. Okay. How about the little tang? I bought one for my boyfriend when we first met because I was like, try it, and yeah. then he's like, yeah, it's okay. I'm like, ah, oh, really? I had an ex nice. who loved those little tanga eggs and I, I thought it was cool. Yeah. Um, they're yeah. single use. Yeah. So I guess it could help women like he and men. I imagine. I can't imagine men aren't doing this. Right. Cause men, like when we have sex workers on so often, oh, I they think say, more men the are men, doing this probably. Yeah. They say like the men just want to fucking talk and be, feel like they're cared for. I mean, there you go. Yeah. And now, now we don't got to do it. Right. But that is that's hindering our the way we relate. Oh, other. I mean, all, all of technology. I mean, I think yeah. men, much of technology is hindering the way we relate to one another. Yeah. But, you know, can't. Well, I mean, let's get AI boyfriends real quick. God, I'm give just it a I, shot. Why not? I'm just really interested. Do you want to get an AI girlfriend? But like, it no. doesn't give you okay. the link. Well, but Mike, what if Michael, we mandate? I'll do it for the what show. What if we mandate yeah. it for yeah. the show? I'll do it yeah. for the because show. I but I'm know. not going to do it for my life. No, we're not doing it for our lives either. <laughs> yeah, it's for the show. It's curious. For the show, I'll do it for sure. How much does it? Cost? I love having a show where you could just dive into something that you're like, I wouldn't do this any other time because yeah. it feels pathetic. But like, this is awesome. I'll I can't go wait undercover. to see what I'm kind of ads excited. I'm going to get after just googling. How do you get an AI boyfriend? <laughs> You're going to get an ad for like moving to Arizona. Wait, you can get install now. True mate, virtual AI friend. Oh, that's nice. Wait, AI boyfriend, anima. Okay. Fine. We have to look into how yeah. to do this. Wait, this guy says, I tried dating an AI boyfriend for a day. Shut up, Lucas. We're, this is Jeff our fun, thing. Boo. This is our thing. Well, I'm fascinated by this. Okay. Well, our, this is our summer, summer AI fling. Yeah. <laughs> How oh is my your God. summer? I did, I'm dating. I'm seeing someone. I'm dating the perfect man. <laughs> Can you imagine? We just start. Tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> What's the <laughs> guy made of AI? Uh-huh. 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 And I loved every minute. <laughs> we just start posting pictures and everyone's like, that guy's really wow. Photoshopped. Corinne nailed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Corinne nailed a JC Penney's oh glamour my. shot hottie. God, that's so funny. Um, you know who's also funny? Sorry, I, I could feel lipstick on my teeth. Okay, we've moved on. <clears throat> Do you know who's also funny? 
our guests today. That's correct. That's exactly our guests that's exactly today. where I was going. Uh, one of them is a stand-up comedian and an actress on a lot of your favorite television shows. Mm-hmm. The other is a very well-known podcast personality. Together, they are two of the co-hosts of Trash Tuesday. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to welcome to the show Esther, Esther Pavitsky and Kalila. We are here with Esther and Kalila of uh, Trash Tuesday. I was like, Trash tra- 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 Talk Tuesday. So happy to have you guys here. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Welcome to New York temporarily. Um, yeah, we, uh, you know, because there's four of us. So we sometimes we like to start off with this like little card game where you just like really intimate questions. Oh. Um, so I figured we can, I'll read one and then we can each go around and answer it. Yes, wait, I um, want to start every hangout like that. That's is it so fun? fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so we can start with you, Esther. When were you last in a in a fight? <laughs> Just now with that mic stand. When were you last in a fight? Yeah, it's okay. You don't have to. That's more of. A, I feel like that's more of an aesthetic yeah. piece. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but she's still trying to make it look good. Very me. When were When were you last in a fight? What caused it, and who won? Okay, last in a fight. Well, I'm living in New York with my fiance right now, so I'm sure we recently had a fight. <laughs> I can't think of one. The longest fiance ship <laughs> in America I goes know. to Esther. I know. How many years like have that. you been gay? Well, she just changed her last name and she's like, we're not oh. even doing the wedding. I love that. One time I just signed on and it said Esther King and I was like, this bitch is trying to wow. avoid a wedding at all costs. That's like <laughs> signing up for drum lessons and then telling everybody so you get the high of I'm doing drums, but then you don't actually do drums. That takes one to know one. Precisely, precisely. Um, I feel like I need to think about a fight. I. Uh. Do you have one, Kalila? Um, yeah, uh, a, a boy I'm seeing. Ooh, Ooh you got no fight? What happened? Um, so I'm not used to, it turns out my whole life I thought I was uh, uh, anxiously attached. Oh, really? And, and um, I, I still think I am, but he thinks I'm completely avoidant. And he is kind <laughs> of like, the fight? the fight is this. He's like, you, when you walk, you just have very erratic flight pattern and you just zoom off and you kind of do your own thing with like no regard about who's around you. I'm like, no, that's just ADHD. Mm-hmm. Like that's not, and apparently I do that a lot. My sister's like, yeah, that's just what Kalila does. Like her, she just goes wherever weird. her, yeah. Yeah, she just walks weird. And I am pigeon-toed. <laughs> uh, oh, then there, wait, but how is being anxious she attachment to have to do with your walk? Uh, he thinks it's me being avoidant because I just oh. kind of go uh. off into my own, like- You're a roamer. I used to date a roamer, yeah. She yes, did date that's a roamer. exactly yeah. it. So it's mm-hmm. like, I don't announce my left yep. turns or my right turns, yep. I just go. Yep. Oh. You know, you might be, I think I, cause I've always identified very strongly as anxious attached, but I realized <laughs> I might be there's anxious and avoidant. Okay, so that's anxious what I avoidant. think I am. Yeah, the second you feel like you might get hurt, you're out the door. Exactly. Correct. <laughs> Have yeah. I noticed? I'll hurt you before you hurt me, motherfucker. When well, when I'm in a fight with Dave, like like let's say like a recent one, it was like I wanted to do something and he didn't want to, and I immediately go, I don't want to do it either. Like I immediately, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, that's fine. I don't want to. It's so childish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like, <laughs> was that just you would be in the right? Or like, <laughs> no, it's a, it's like you're so scared of like, being rejected. Ah, uh, okay. I say, try I say. to quickly reject. <laughs> well, I used to think reject the rejector. <laughs> I used to think that you know, like, um. I used to think that my urge to kind of want to end things immediately when things are going bad was an avoidant thing, but it's not. It's actually an anxious thing. Mm. So if 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 the boat is rocked a little bit, my first thing is, well, why are we even doing this? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd rather be the one to pull the trigger because I w- I'm so afraid of him ending it. Mm. Right, 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 um, right. Yeah. That's a good it's, one. It also is a little bit of all or nothing, black and white yeah. thinking. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, one little thing is wrong. Throw it all away. Oh, I'm someone's been to that. therapy. Ooh, yeah, okay. someone reads books about self-help and <laughs> someone shit. Someone has problems. Yeah. <laughs> Body keeps a score, bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I'm trying to think of a fight. Last fight. Like, I, I when I read that card, I think of like a big epic fight. Mm-hmm. It's my mom. Oof. Oh, oh, a big epic fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what caused it? Our relationship. Um, and who won? <laughs> eh, 
We both lost. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I get in fights a, a lot <laughs> uh, because you know, it, it's like, I, it's just like if no one else is going to get in the fight, I feel like it's waiting for me, so I'll handle it. <laughs> don't tease me with a fight, um, sir. Um, yeah. So my last fight was Tuesday <laughs> in a van with a man. Yeah, man. <laughs> was it his van? Yeah, or? it was his van, and oh. I won a hundred percent. And I walked myself back home and then I cried. So I lost secretly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I've, I don't have a lot of fight in me like I used to. Although yesterday <laughs> we, hope rec mine goes away. we recorded a podcast with Rick Glassman. And every time I'm in his presence, I'm, I'm, I'm in fight mode. Like I okay. just, I, I don't know what it is. I, and I really think it's like, I see myself in him. So Ooh. I just like, oh, yeah. but he was a quirky guy with a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> He was going on on our podcast about how like he, he loves his mom and his mom is such a strong woman. And I was like, oh, is that why you love models? And so I'm nice one, <laughs> Esther. Yeah. Get it for the girls. I'm yeah, that. that's some kind of a fight. I think it was. Fight. It felt like it. I was there. Yeah. yeah, it was uncomfortable. You were trying to break tension. A I lot. really was. I really oh, was. yeah. This yeah. is the most feminine conversation. I'm like, yeah, no, I think that constitutes a fight. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Do you guys drive? <laughs> I do. I get in fights every time I drive. Uh -huh. Oh, because someone pisses crazy. me off and does some dumb shit, and Are I'm like, I'm driver? driving up. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen as a good driver. Yeah. She's just fast. an angry driver. I'm very oh, angry. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm codependent with my car in that, like, however I'm feeling is how I drive. Um, but I drive a Mustang, so I'm like, when people try to get in front of me without their blinker, I'm like, what? And I will, I will get out of my car. Wow. I've gotten out of my car before. So and I'm then, not aggressive when I drive because I'm scared of people like you. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm not going to do anything, but like it's only it's always only with men. I'm just envisioning you driving and I can't see it. <laughs> oh, you guys don't know about her driving down <laughs> stairs. <laughs> what? No, I do not. She's the original Italian job. I swear to you guys. <laughs> How the fuck do you do that? Please say it was a park it was, and not a home. It was <laughs> I was doing I was doing the Bad Friends podcast and I left the studio <laughs> and I wasn't paying that much of attention. Oh, yeah. And I was driving out of the parking lot. I thought it was an exit. It was an exit. <laughs> for a so walking for, person. For a person. <laughs> That's right, for someone on foot. Yeah. And I was stuck, got immediately stuck on the stairs, like, ah. And um, yeah, it was- How'd you get I don't, off the stage, the tow truck? Randomly, this like little man was walking by and was like, oh, I have something. And he had one of those jacks and- Whoa. Oh, you yeah. had to lift the car. So you, did you continue to go down the stairs or did you reverse back up the stairs? <laughs> I, I, that's a great question. I think we went back. I think we went back. Wow. I think, that's I don't skill. remember, but yeah, I have to say that was a time where men really like, they- they were useful. Like yeah. Oh, this was immediately after the pandemic. So people wanted to interact and, and oh, use their body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want to feel like a hero. <laughs> yeah. And, but not from their home. Wow. Yeah. And I, I do have a damsel in distress complex. So sure. it worked out for me too. Did you yes. get his number? <laughs> I should have. How little was he? Um, you know, just like when you think of a little old man. Oh, oh. I was like if you're calling someone little, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really cute. Yeah, I get, I get in these vibes where I'm like, oh, I'm so sick of men, and then when something breaks, I'm like, I'm gonna blank them over and help me. <laughs> you gotta get a man when something breaks. Yeah, or like a jar of pickles. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Okay. Okay. So that's. I'm glad you brought that up, Esther, because <laughs> I have a hack yeah, for all the single ladies Ooh. out there. I couldn't open a jar of pickles and I got so fucking mad and I was like, I will be, I was almost going to bring it to one of my spots and I was like, Jeez. and have a man open it there. And I was like, Corinne, you can solve this for yourself because if you bring a jar of pickles to the spot, you're, pickle girl. you're never going to live this down, right? So I, I was just starting to think, and I was like, think science. And I was like, you just need to release the pressure. So I was like, what if I stab a hole in the middle of it, which then releases the pressure oh. and I can open it and, and call me Bill deny the science guy because I fucking did it. Bill, sure Bill, does my Bill. whole refrigerator smell like pickles because now like pickle <laughs> juice is emanating, but I don't care. I'll get a box of uh, baking soda and that'll fix that. Did yeah. you try running it under um, hot, water. hot water? I didn't do that. No. Did you try tapping it from the bottom? I tapped it. I tried everything, like pushing Jesus. it against something. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. And it was just like, um, also I have a very small hand, you so it's not good hands. for a lot of things. You have dainty hands. Um, but yeah, I was like, I tried everything and I like, I even had like the, whatever, the, the thing that you put over it. I'm like, nothing, the grip thing, nothing would work. And I was like, you just need to release the pressure. I was like, think science. I wow. did it. Wow. So that's really helpful. You don't need men for it. Did you ever ever have a moment where you're like, I need a guy to do this, and then you just did it yourself, and then it either went good or bad? 
I think I was the guy in my relationship for a really long time. Like uh, I was a jar opener. I was wow. a can opener. <laughs> yeah. Like if there he was everything on the shelves. Yeah, he would yeah. like Bobby you're tall. Would break yeah. the and I have big hands. Mm. <laughs> Can I see them? Yeah. That's that's a useful hand they're right big, there. But they're like girly. Still. Very girly. Mine are, mm, My, once somebody said like you could tell what a woman is by her hands and the wrinkles on her neck, and I never forgot it. Oh, you could tell how old a woman is by yeah. her hands. Did an oh, Asian yeah. woman tell you that? I don't know. Yeah. You know what it might have been. Yeah, <laughs> they're cruel about that shit. Yeah, they're not. They're, they needed an add on at the, the salon. Honesty. Yeah, you know, a lot of people are honest these days. You know. Um, oh man. But, but yeah, I was the the man in the house for a long time, and um. I just learned life hacks just by virtue of living in a third world country for most of my life. Like mm. I know in, indoor plumbing, I know how to oh. mitigate, like, you know, if you can't flush or overflows, I'm your girl. Wow. Um, I know how to like basic re rewiring stuff. Like, this is so helpful. Hacks. Those are skills. This yeah, is so like, helpful. Bobby's mom only liked me because when I would go over to her house in Arizona, she was just like, okay, I got I got jobs for you. <gasps> you were the boyfriend. You I were was the son-in-law. I was the son-in-law. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Are I'm you, getting horny right now. I know. <laughs> are you the guy love this. your current relationship? Um, very much. Ooh, so that's interesting. So you got to experience like both, both sides, extreme versions of both yeah, sides. Yeah, and I don't know w which I prefer, honestly. Oh, interesting. Like mm. initially, like having been with Bobby for so long, I was like, I just want someone to just like shower me with all of this, dote on me, and then I have this urge to just run at the same time. Like this is too It's much. a little overwhelming yeah. for sure. Yeah. I'm like, come to mama. Hey. Because I'm also a masculine energy most time. You're feminine. I'm, I'm guessing, for sure right? I'm a masculine. Or Esther or, or your young boy. <laughs> yeah, you're a little boy. <laughs> young Japanese boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I feel like though I do have the assertive aggressive. Like sometimes I'm kind of the leader, and I and I. I That's what leaders say that they're kind Ooh, of the leader. I'm kind of the leader. <laughs> no, but she's right. She so I cannot talk to like figures of authority, like the spectrum person or the Re bank teller. That, like a, that's a figure of authority, authority. <laughs> for me. I'm terrified of having to pick up the the call in the phone to call my doctor. And Esther is such a boss in that way. Like she will mm. open a bank account for you, a business account. Wow, all of those nice. Things. Yes, it sounds like we really would you, make a good You guys battle. together, well, you two together are like a full person. Yeah. You know, we all bring stuff to the table. I am curious, so you're in like a more submissive role now. Are you finding yourself uncomfortable it's, or wanting to do more? Or like bored? I, I don't know. Mm. I, I honestly like don't know because he's not, he's very soft-spoken and very sweet, um, but he hunts, he fishes, Whoa. he builds like, you know, engines. So he's, Whoa, but cool. so he's, but his nature is very like soft and feminine. So he's kind of like a little bit of oh. both. Ooh, that's yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh my I like God. That. You Building need that. Engines. I feel like you, you need, everybody needs to have a mix. You don't want just like some lumberjack that's like, rah, like yeah, yeah, that yeah. is true. And, but in bed, I'm super girly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super, yeah, super too. girly. Just, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I was going to ask you, like, <laughs> your, your relationship dynamics were different in the, your back-to-back -back relationships. Was your Is your sex, obviously sex life is going to be different because it's a different human being and you're combining two different sets of chemistry. But like, it, was there a, a marked difference mm -hmm. between your sex lives with that with those roles in mind? Yeah, I think both are equally as like fun, but very different. Um, with, with the new one, um, he's just like younger and more creative, I think. Mm. Um, Bobby, it was just really fun because his belly used to make my used to rub on my clit a little bit oh like, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. so helpful so yeah. i love a good is, belly yeah, yeah. i'm right, a belly right, right. girl you I told like me that belly. once corinne and i was like oh shit that Did made, I? made me really attracted to guys with bellies i love a so chunkster like, mm. yeah because me too <laughs> rub my clit naturally <laughs> i like you know? a big boy <laughs> i love a big boy <laughs> it's nice i love Cuddly. big boys it's all i want big boys everywhere i will not look at you if you're a gym i will not even look twice i won't even like breathe in your direction wow if you're a gym bro yeah an ab can't rub on your clit no abs are so uncomfortable to sleep on like that's the thing i'm just like they're so nice to look at but so uncomfortable to sleep on i was just reminded how this one boyfriend and i it was in college was it in college? Yeah, like end of high, no, it was high school and college where I would, I would basically mimic a guy with a belly by telling him to turn over and I would just hump his butt. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> it felt resourceful. so good. It felt so good. So I can only imagine if the butt was on the front and I could look at him while I came, that'd be even more intimate. Love a front butt. Yeah. Wait, you were finishing by humping a butt? Yeah. Well, you've never done that? <laughs> I'm like impressed. Get on it, girl. Come on, yeah. Esther. Yeah. All the girls are doing it. I was very comfortable with him. I've never been able to like hump something like. Oh, that's all I did in childhood. 
Oh, okay. So it's like how I was used to coming, I think. Okay. So I, was like, I missed well, that era. <laughs> we need a we need a bump here for me to rub up against. You never could you come from friction? Well, I just I never was like a a child that like rubbed one out. Like that never <gasps> That's Yeah, I mean me neither. Okay. Were you? Yeah. I made things rub each other. I would okay. find objects to rub, but then I, <laughs> so I'm the only and I serial honestly masturbator. think it carries on into adulthood because I like yes. watching people rub up against each other. I always like being the third. I'm kind mm, of a cuck in that fun. way. Yeah. I like yeah. watching when I watch porn, I'm looking at the expression of the helper lover. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I totally hear that. I totally Thank hear you. that. What? That's so fun. What's the helper lover? If in, in a threesome <laughs> or if there's more than two people, I'm looking at the person either watching them or assisting in the spreading of the cheek. Yeah. Yeah, or the. I was clip. just thinking of like a white glove making hamburger helper. <laughs> the visual that I went to. I so. like looking because I, I I watch a lot of cuckold porn or cuck queen porn really because uh, I like when the guy in the relationship fucks another girl in front of the girl he's dating, mm -hmm. and I like looking at the guy. I'm just and then I look at her, the girl's his girlfriend. I'm like, oh, she's jealous, but she likes it. This is awesome. <laughs> Jealousy makes me horny. It's weird. Same. Yeah. I think I honestly have this. I don't know if we can talk to a neuroscientist about this, but I feel as though like the compartment in the brain for jealousy is close, if not the same as feeling horny. It, it Horniness. feels similar. Doesn't yeah. it? Even if I'm jealous of someone's like career accomplishments, which doesn't happen often because I'm usually like really happy for people. But when I am jealous, I do get also a little horny. <laughs> I never really thought of that. Can we, can we dig into this? Because yeah. I want to understand it more. Do you think it has something to do with like, because I'm trying to like put myself in that position. And is it like uh, it makes a competitive side come out? So you're like, oh, I want to prove that I can fuck. So I'm turned on. Is there anything? For me, there's a little mm. bit of control in that I've been cheated on before. And I think if I like am there and orchestrate the cheating in front of me, that's like, ha ha, I win. Even though or he's the one who wins. Heal the wound. Like for me, yeah. I was um, telling Dr. Drew this because he's always like, Kalila, keep it simple and safe. What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> and but for me, it's like, well, again, because I've been cheated on and that's such a wound for me. So like I think that if I can overcome this, mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. I'm free as a bird for the rest of my life. Yeah. 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 Truly, truly. You can get on top of it. You can make your brain do tricks so that you can like kind of live through any experience. But also um, just generally, it's an intense energy to feel jealous in the same way that being horny is an intense feeling. So I think maybe I just associate the two. Just like passionate. being anxious and excited. Uh -huh. yeah, kind of uh -huh. like the two, oh. it's adrenaline at play Your stomach still. feels the same technically. Yeah. It's either just because of good. I also, like huh. when I masturbate, I masturbate to like the guys I've dated or I'm dating, like having sex with somebody else. Yeah, it's awesome. Nikki Glaser, I feel like, has a similar king. I think yeah, we've talked she does. about it. Her and I have yeah. talked about it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Love being a cuck. <laughs> when people say cuck is an insult, I'm like, hmm, joke's on you. It's fun. I agree. <laughs> I don't like that. What are your thoughts on that, Esther? I don't know. Like, I kind of want to get into it. Esther, <laughs> I'm going to call you out quickly. What? Do it. Uh -oh. Across the dinner table, oh, you have yeah. said, Kalila, will you please have sex with Dave? I forgot about and that. And Dave's sitting oh, right there like, you're what a cuck the too. fuck? Is the cuck or is that just because you didn't want to have sex with Dave? Uh, that was like, <laughs> was more, Dave there? It, he yeah. was there. He was like, oh, I could see myself doing that, but it's just like, if I was just tired of fucking my fiance. Fuck <laughs> but see, I, it was, there's something that like, there is a safety with you, whereas like there that is. would feel comfortable, but I, Anyone else, mm. like if someone I don't like or I wouldn't, oh, I don't yeah. know. I'm, I'm having, super respectful and I would never get in the way of your relationship. You. I would just true. open You're my so hole for him. so safe and trusting that I'm like, oh, if Dave like wow. wanted to get a blowjob or like fuck <laughs> Kalila, I'd be like, why not? Like that could be so fun. Like no one, I mean, obviously it shouldn't happen because it's weird. By but the way, yeah. I felt fuck honored. It. Thank you. Because I know our, our <laughs> other friend was like, I'll do it. And I was like, not you. <laughs> wow. I was like, you'll be no, too. No, no. You'll be weird about it and you won't even be as good as Kalila would be. Like, it's not, you're not worth it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. But there is like. I, but you suggested it. So did the idea make you horny? Or are you just like, hey, let's did. everybody have some. I feel like you're just like a curious me. little cat and you just want to see like different things happen. Yeah. And I also <laughs> was kind of going through a phase where I was like, oh, what if we did like gut? Uh, I know this is fucked up, but like if Dave and I like had a sex worker join us or I, something. Yeah, I've done that. yeah. That's not fucked up. You've done that? Up at all. That's, That's cool. Guy, well, I've had I, a male sex worker with a guy that I was seeing. 
Oh. Yeah, flown yeah, in from that LA. That's so fun. Yeah, that's so not fun. weird at all. There was like a moment where- it was where felt so safe, exactly how you're describing with the, the idea with Kalila. He was so lovely and such a gentleman and so like honest about what he wanted and what he didn't want that it felt, it was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. You know what else, if I'm digging into the subconscious, I think we're finding is Ooh. about this is mm. that- when I used to be a babysitter, I babysat for these fabulous Beverly Hills housewife mom women. And one of them was like, always keep the man on a long leash, which meant long like, let them leash. do. And I'm wondering now, is it a subconscious thing of like, well, if I'm like, yeah, you can do it, whatever you want, then it's like You're the best fiance ever. Well, then they're not going to secretly want it. Yeah, right? that, there's definitely that element. So Chill there's girl, a little yeah. bit of like, give. Oh, whatever you like. It's Maybe. also cool to play with a freedom uh. that's not um, accepted by society. Because you're yeah. like, oh, I want to feel free in this way that everyone's like, what? You're like, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Like, you kind of feel like you're conquering this thing that everybody's afraid of. Yeah. Because cheating happens in so many relationships all the time, and it never will stop happening. So I'm like, if you get ahead of it, you just cheat in front of me. <laughs> have there you we go. Got, have you guys read Esther mm. Perel's new book, The State of Affairs? Oh, yes. Yes. She has I did. I read that book. I just listened to what Christina says. Yeah. I got the Cliff's notes. <laughs> I hooked yeah. up. Uh, there was a point where I, I was hooking up after I broke up with my ex of of seven years, I hooked up with a guy who was married. Um, and I read that book before I engaged in any, before I basically gave him a sign of like, you can be more aggressive flirting with me. Um, and it was very helpful. She she nails relationship dynamics so well. And she, her and Dan Savage introduced this concept of like, sometimes cheating can strengthen a relationship, which I was like, what? But after reading her book, I was like, I could see how that happens. Yeah. And it also kind of healed me in a way because I'm like, oh, it makes me less afraid of a partner straying. Yeah. It's a, it's some there's like so many different p reasons why people do it. And sure. um, I don't know, it it made the idea of someone betraying me feel less threatening. Yeah. Less weight. Yeah. Less weighty for sure. Can you explain why? Um. Well, there's like multiple reasons why. Also, one of the statistics she gave that I loved was that like, um, like for instance, she used like Mexico as um, as an example where, you know, mm. e and the same applies for a country like the Philippines where it's almost like if you, it's almost a status, a sign of status if you have a mistress. Like you cannot be a politician, a successful man. Like, are you even successful unless you have a mistress? And they even have homes for their mistresses. Whoa. And these mistresses live like good lives. And, soprano shit. Um, but she was basically spitting out statistics about like more and more, these women are taking on like, like just, you know, are doing the same thing. So like they're kind of evening it out in the whole cheating thing. Also the or way that she- on, like misters, is that, is that the term for- <laughs> Oh, mistress? for a guy yeah. mistress? Yeah, oh, what's mister? a male What's a male mistress? Mister. Can you look this up, Michael? That makes sense. Thank you. Also, the way, after reading that book, I, I was like, wow, cheating is not personal. Because the whole, the, the thing that hurts about it so much is, I knew it. I wasn't worthy worthy of love. I'm not worthy of monogamy. I'm not, you know, all that, all those things that your brain can do. Me oh, yeah, it has nothing to do. It's always about do the person, you. whatever's going on in the life of the person who's doing the cheating. It's not about the yeah. person getting cheated it's on. It's almost why, like, in our society, like, every 10 years, we get, like, our famous, beautiful woman who gets cheated on to just sort of remind everyone it's like they had Halle Berry now we have sure. Emily Ratajkowski yeah yeah it's like oh okay it's not it's me. just a guy thing yeah and a, I guess a chick thing it's a person thing it's a human thing yeah yeah one of the things that I liked is like when a, well, she used an example of a guy who cheated on his wife and he was like I wasn't it had nothing to do with her I almost wanted to introduce my a new version of myself to myself oh yeah yeah like yeah. he wanted yeah. yeah he felt like a different person with this and I I, I don't know. I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. It really isn't personal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's usually because you hate yourself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. A paramour. Oh, why is that why the, the band is called that? Ass male version of the name. Wait. I thought. Or sugar baby kept man or top toy boy. Ooh, house toy husband. Oh, wait, no, that's not <laughs> it. Yeah. That's just my my dream. <laughs> I also like um, in that Mine book too. <laughs> the state of affairs. I think I've talked to you about this on the podcast, Corinne. But like Esther Pearl talks about introducing the idea of the third. But without yeah. whether you engage in it or not has no makes no difference. But two people need to feel like they are two separate people. When you enmesh with each other and you're like toxically codependent, you it, it, the attraction will eventually die because you're like you're just one amoeba. There's no separateness. So playing with the idea, like if your boyfriend looks hot and he's going out, he's like, "Ooh, you're gonna, you're gonna get hit on by a lot of chicks." Like just even that, like playfully kind of putting the idea of the other in your like back and forth. Yeah. 
I think that makes sense. Oh God, I hate that enmeshed feeling. Nothing I hate more. You hate it. Yes. I used to love it, but no, I, I hate it. I like I like to feel like my own person. Like sometimes even even my dog is like that too. Like I got the perfect dog for me. Like he'll put himself to bed, and like that's I love that, <laughs> love that about for him. You. And like I have a a, a you loft. You want to be enmeshed with your dog What's sometimes, your dog? but yeah. not all the time. That's like yeah. there's not there's no living creature, even my dog, who I'm saying like I like that living creature more than any other living creature I've ever met, and even him. And I sometimes were like you know like I'll try to lay on his butt and he'll growl at me, and I'll be like valid. I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll it's give hard. you space. It's hard to not lose yourself in a romantic <clears throat> relationship, even if you're not codependent. I, so I have always been a lean, I obviously always lean towards enmeshing. That's like what I want. That's the goal. Become one. <laughs> like you're a part of my bones. Yes. Really? What is it about that for you? I, well, after having several therapists on our show, we, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Drew and Katie Morton, I think I've discovered that my thing is my emotional needs were not met as a child. Mm -hmm. So like literally all it takes is for someone to make eye contact with me and like think what I said is so, just enough to stay awake. And <laughs> wow, it's like, I cling, I want to, mm. you know, and the relationship I'm in now is not like that. And I'm always like, fighting it. Like I want to be closer. I want to be more, but I've learned like much exactly what you guys are saying. It's never going to be sustainable. It's also not hot. No, like it when, feels hot at first. And then you're like, Oh, I don't want to fuck you at all. I don't even look at you. Yeah. Does the fight keep you going though? I bet the fight is part of the reason that you guys have been together so long because yeah. you have to keep fighting it. Yeah. Because he's his own person. Yeah. And that yeah. has been so huge for me because it's made me stay my own person. And now I'm, I've learned like, that is what I want. Yeah. Even though there's still times where I'm like, I love you. So much. Yeah. Yeah. And Dave is so secure. Yeah. And he's like, it's just. <laughs> you look so I'm, disappointed. I am. No, it's not his flaws. <laughs> I, truly, like, for years, I tried to not have him be. Like, secure. are you going to wear that? Yeah. Okay, sure. But well, you wanted to be a little bit jealous because I was like, it's so comforting being around a secure person. It is now that I'm yeah. better. Yes. But there was so much time where I really wanted him to be jealous and I couldn't mm. understand why he wasn't. Did you ever ask him? We, oh yeah, we talked about it. What did like, he say? He just, he's just not like that. Or I would be no. like, before we met, did you just like sit at home and <laughs> wait for that special someone? And he's like, Whoa. no, I was fine. Yeah. Like, I was fine before we met. Whoa, I would be radical. fine. He, like, yeah, it's, it is hot in a way. Yeah. It's frustrating. It's but like, it's, oh, you don't need me. Yeah. All right. I'll yeah. follow you everywhere. But have you always been the type of person that doesn't want enmeshment? Well, yeah, I don't want a meshman. I do want a soulmate, though. I hope that one exists, you know, for me. But that, I wouldn't be a mesh with that person because my soulmate would all, also understand how to talk to me, how to act around me and would be their own person. Like my biggest problem or one of like my biggest problems in relationships is finding someone, a man who loves himself. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty hard to come by. It's very, it mm -hmm. seems like a real simple, you know, kind of high on the list ask, but I... I haven't found one. Yeah, I, I found one, but yeah. Yeah, you know, you're right that that is very hard. And when they don't yeah. love themselves, I wonder if it's a city yeah. thing. Not good. Yeah. I it's wonder not as, like I, if in the middle of the country, there's men who love themselves. I don't just, think so. You know, farming. I don't think so. I think so. Like, yeah, because the, they love themselves so much, they don't need to, they don't feel the need to like be in a more populated place. I don't know. I also realize I, I, I kind of don't really need an intelligent person. <laughs> I love that. For Give you. me a dumb fuck. <laughs> I I've dated dumb people. It's not bad. I don't know. Like, uh, it's fun. It depends what's going on in your life. Like, um, this is fucked up. Right after my dad died, I was dating like not a dumb person, but just it was he was not dumb, but he's not like the level of intelligence that I'm used to. And it was kind of refreshing. I didn't have to Why have like these like high level political talks that made me pissed off before I went to bed every night. Yeah, we just like, like watched cartoons and shit. And I was like, oh, this is lovely. Cartoons. Yeah, like I don't need to, I, I mean, I have my own intelligent thoughts in my own brain. I don't also need to be hit with them from someone else like minutes <laughs> yeah, like before darts. I'm resting my eyes. I don't need to hear about how a man got kidnapped or something, you yeah. know? And that's what would happen in my relationship where I felt intellectually met. It was also wildly Exhausting. frustrating. Right, I mean, no thank you. Like hard pass on your opinions. <laughs> just Right. Wait, so what do you yeah, like extra about- extra man opinions, you're right. What, what, um, the what's guy the vibe I'm seeing then? is incredibly bright. 
like borderline like savant and it drives me fucking crazy and mm. i don't oh. know if it's good for me because it activates me in a way that like i've never been activated and i'm just straight up like Ooh, pissed that's, a lot but that's good yeah. so somebody kind of showing a there has to be a mirror of some kind towards he's you ab, he's definitely a mirror but to mm. get into any kind of even small like inconsequential argument is so exhausting for me yeah because oh. he's bright yes. enough to run marathons around me ah uh, he doesn't let anything slide or he'll like pinpoint right. your the holes in your argument and he's just so astute so like he's able to he's just like an observer he's just wow. so his brain is wide open and i'm just like you need to just like get yeah. like Dude, smoke some weed yeah like and he does oh wow he's so imagine smart. if Damn. he didn't wow. and i just wish that like he'd hit, fall and hit his head just a little bit in yeah. the right part to just kind of knock knock it Something down just, i disagree yeah. i i disagree i think that that is great and even though you're saying you don't like it and i'm telling you that, that you're wrong but <laughs> Wouldn't you be bored if someone- I want boredom. I'll, no, I swear in boredom? therapy, I went to this, Bobby went to this place. Um, it was like a one week intensive therapy place. And I joined in on the family um, um, session. And this amazing therapist named Doug was like, healing is in the boredom. And so when you say bored, I'm oh. like, give it to me, give it to me. Because I grew up in a very traumatic household, always high intensity. Like I'm very right. familiar with- Chaos. So you're right. If so like now you're craving I just want the dumb and bo like boring. Like give me like a house husband who's just going to just hi. Technically, yeah. the most boring mm. uh, then would be no boyfriend. That's I don't think that's no boyfriend is not boring at yeah. all. It's constant chaos. <laughs> oh really? I yeah. sit around bored. When I don't have a boyfriend, that's when I'm gonna get get my in myself in the most trouble possible. Oh. Consistently. Like I mean, what? my therapy sessions are just like every week when I when I when I'm single, I'm giving it like I it's like I lived a whole life over that <laughs> week or two weeks. I mean, my therapist must be thoroughly entertained. Yeah, I'll be I'll come I'll come back after two weeks and I've been through two full relationships. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's, it's wild. Yeah. I'm no, I'm con like, I was actually thinking about this yesterday. I, I was like, part of the reason I'm, in, I'm into getting in a relationship right now is because I spent so much time like with family stuff over the past couple of years because of all the death. Like I just, for the sake of time, I need to be in a relationship. So I don't huh. keep getting myself into these into wild me. things that I get myself into because it will save time. I'm like wasting time getting myself into these antics <laughs> if I want to have sex, you know? So I think it's like, yeah, it's oh, no, I'm, I love being in a relationship and bored out of my mind right now, <laughs> right now. That's, I think that'd be great I've for my had, career. I've never had a boring relationship. <clears throat> Relationships to me are inherently boring. Really? Yes. I think they're so fucking fun. No. Cause I'm like, what adventure can we go on? Or like, what, let's give up something, you know, and see who could do it longer. Well, yeah, I, I, I think the same, what, what can I give up? But it's like a part of my personality oh. or <laughs> something, a want I have in life, a goal, you know? So that's the Mine's problem like there. Cigarettes, booze, <laughs> yeah, drugs. Yeah, I don't do, well, can you carve out boring times in your daily life? Like, or like, you know, once a week just to sit, meditation is Oh, I think I'm, boring. I'm an extremely boring person. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. I really embrace being boring. Like I have a very, very kind of like borderline hermit kind of lifestyle. Oh, and do you I, think that's um, because of the chaos that you grew up in? Yeah. Mm. What kind of chaos are we talking? Um, a lot of diddling, a lot of- Oh, like molestation. Yeah, yeah a lot of sexual abuse, a lot of physical abuse, a lot Fuck. of verbal abuse, Jesus. a lot of yeah, just yeah. like, like, you know, like just being pushed to my limit as a child. I remember I was just telling somebody this, I think as early as the age of four, I was like, something's not right. Wow. Not around me, but inside me. So right. I already knew I was so young that I had been like affected by my external environment. Did you suppress yeah. the, the memory of the molestation until later? Or did you always know that it was happening? I knew like, it was happening when it was happening. Uh, like I, I woke up in the middle of the night with oh. my like my underwear or like are wrapped around my knees. And Jesus. Um, I saw like an older family member run into the bathroom and then like oh, leave the house. And then I Jesus. alerted, I started crying. I alerted my mom and everyone was like, let's keep this down. Like, let's oh, not tell your dad. My dad trauma. wasn't allowed to know Fuck. and we oh were never allowed to talk about so it. So it was your problem, your secret to keep. Yeah, and I was eight. Jesus Christ. You know, That's so, so and so never to be spoken about again. No one asked me like, hey, what happened? Oh, How do you yeah. feel? You, that's so, so, it's one of those trauma Oh things my that God. could ever happen to a human <clears throat> being is a, as a child getting molested by like somebody you're supposed to trust. And it's always somebody who pretends that you can trust them. Yeah. yeah. A family member, a pastor or whatever the fuck it is. But then I, I talked to my, cause we lived in a multifamily household, a lot of my, like my cousins and stuff, which has its perks, but also its downsides. Cause you have a lot of older men around the house. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it turns out we all got 
fuck, man. And none of us were allowed to say anything because it's like the Secrecy. women in my family also got hurt similarly. And everyone was just like, just carry on, oh. grin and bear and just, oh, just Jesus. move on. When were you finally able to like deal with it, deal with it, like feel the feelings and like have a cathartic release? Because that's so much energy that gets stuck in a child. Yeah, I was I was a mess of a teenager. Yeah, absolute mess. Um, I but I started therapy at fifteen. Okay, thankfully, oh, good, yeah, good, good. But then um, my my second diddling was in America, a place I thought was the safe. I, I, moving from the Philippines, I was like America, like that's where yeah. my mom can no longer beat my ass because I think they have people that protect children there. <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, there are gonna be all these like like Sweet Valley High schools oh, and all yeah. these like, all these big dreams. And I, I, every adult in my teenage years, like moving as an immigrant here, like let me down, including my Fuck. family doctor who oh. would do these like tests. Like he would, Exams. I would go in for like, cause I was an athlete. So I would go in for like a bum shoulder and he did the same thing to my sister and Jesus. he would always do a pelvic exam. Oh my oh, God. Jesus and he would Christ. do things like, you know, like check Touch the viscosity. Vagina? No, oh. he would pull out my discharge. Oh my God. And he would say things like, look how healthy you are. Ew. Oh. And then my sister, he did anally. Oh, so she Jesus. got the worst end of it. He never did that to me. And then um, over the pandemic, we looked him up and obviously he lost his license because he did far did worse Did he get things. arrested? He didn't get arrested, Fucking but he lost prick. his license. He did try to change his name and practice somebody. Oh, oh else. my of course God. He did. Sadistic yeah. fuck. That's sadistic I can't fuck. believe all he did was lose his license, quite honestly. I mean, that's an American story right there. Apologies <laughs> yes. on behalf of us. Not Sweet Valley High, but rapists fuck. don't go to jail. That's their American dream. So you and your sister had both two moments moments where you found out, oh, he was doing that to you too. Right. Oh my good God. How, how is healing? Like, I imagine it comes in waves, right? But like, what has the healing been like from that? Um, I don't know. I've been really lucky in terms of just like, I'm able to feel sexually liberated today. It took That's a while amazing. to get here. And I feel lucky that at 38, I'm like, okay, like I can actually have fun, not attach anything to like, you know, when I'm with a man or with the way I, I, I none of that affects my sex life today. That's but great. it did a lot when I was younger. I was very Ugh. reckless with sex. I was hypersexual. I would just like want to suck dick for any kind of like attend. It just the yeah, worst, yeah. like it's, because you, you also like your subconscious is like, all right, something happened to me that was out of my control that was evil and awful. So let me be in control sexually. I imagine there's like some type of healing elements to your subconscious with that. Yeah. Sucking all totally. the D's. Sucking all, all the, the D's. D's. I was the high school face queen. Like I- Face queen? I've never even heard that. That's I, what they called me. Oh. Whoa. Cute this, oh, yeah, it's not because you had a hot face? Not because of, of my face. Wow. It's better than BJ queen, I think. Face queen. Yeah. It's nicer. Better than Big D's yeah. McGee. At least they're looking at your face. <laughs> <laughs> face queen I had two psychics tell me I was molested separately um, two years apart and I was like huh okay so I did hypnotherapy and and there's two instances but I still could I take everything with a grain of salt and I couldn't tell the, I got an Akashic Records reading was the second person who told me about the molestation and I was like two for two okay I gotta look into it and, so, and you didn't bring it up, pre, like you didn't. You you just went in cold. You didn't say like I'm inquiring about no, a molestation. Not at all. She okay. brought, I, and I purposely did that because okay. I'm like, if this comes up again, because it first came up <clears throat> with a with a me, with a medical medium. She's like, there's energy in your left hip that's stuck that stems from a violation when you were a child on your father's side. Um, and I was like, that means, and I got, cause I'm so comfortable talking about molestation on guys. We fuck cause so many people were molested. It's crazy. So I'm like, was you're talking about molesting? That's what you're referring to. Is that what happened? She goes, it wasn't right. What happened? I don't know that there was penetration, but it wasn't right. And I was like, okay, okay. I'm gonna have to look. And I didn't, nothing came up. I have no memory of it. Mm. So then I got a, an Akashic records reading. What's that? So that Akashic records. Very Are you even in LA woman or <laughs> not? No, or what? Really, I'm like, in, no, um, the Akashic <laughs> records is a record of everything that's ever happened in the universe. So think of it as like this golden uh, endless library. Um, and so the, a person who's trained to do it can go in and just like, what memories does this person need to know that will better them like for their own betterment? Uh, Cause it's always at that. And she described to me three instances. Once I was a baby, the other one I was six, and another one she said with the possibly with like a teacher of some kind. And I was in love with this teacher, so I was like, I would have remembered if that happened because that would have been the best day of my life at that point, even though it was wrong. 
Um, but yeah, and so I did the hypnotherapy and we, the two first two memories I was told about from the Akashic Records woman came up. I saw it. The the one was just jerking off next to me, but I was a baby. Um, and then the second one was uh, a guy. I remember I'm like, oh, I'm, she basically go, okay, now you're in the elevator and we're going to take you to the next memory that you need to, to you need to think about. Um, you're there, go, where are you? And I'm like, Ugh. and um, I was in this house and this guy like propped me up on the counter and touched, there was touching, but I was like, oh, this is interesting. I'm seeing myself as six, but I'm also watching myself as a six-year-old watching this happen. She goes, that's perfect. You're dissociating. You don't have to have some big emotional release for this. I'm like, that's great. Um, so yeah, so that was, but I, I mean, I, I kind of like regurgitated these memories very quickly, but I still, I'm like, I don't know if, I guess it had, there's no proof, but it did help. I felt like a lot lighter after the hypnotherapy. Do you feel like, cause a lot of the times I feel like we hear about similar to this where people, they didn't know that it happened and then it hits them later, mm -hmm. but you very much know what happened. Mm -hmm. Like, do you feel like it's, that's even really a thing where people can come forget it and yeah. Because we have a friend in common that this has happened to. And he did not know um, until he was 30 mm -hmm. and through hypnotherapy uh -huh. and through like, a, um, and he basically was able to remember a time where a family friend um, was inappropriate with him. So why is it that you know yours? Um, was it consistent like or persistent rather? Um, it was consistent. I mean, I'm sorry. It, it it happened multiple times. Yeah. Um. Most of the time, the the times I don't remember fully are when because he always did it when I was asleep. But I have memories Jeez. or like dreams, memories of dreams I've had where I was being fully like touched. Mm. But then I was such in a deep like slumber. I think. Oh, um, maybe it was. It was happening simultaneously. Happening. Yeah. Fuck, um, yeah but I yeah. only really woke up like very vividly. Like woke up one time. Um, so he might have done it multiple times to me and I just like didn't remember. Mm. Yeah, because the a child's brain is pretty brilliant in that if there's something happens that the kid can't handle and the emotions are too intense, they'll just black it out. Yeah, in the same way, like have you you've heard of like stone babies? No. Wait, what's that? Where it's like a if um a baby is forming in a woman's body, but something happens, so like the baby dies and then the body oh, does a calcification. Oh, okay, of it. yes, yes, yes. Gosh. And it just <clears throat> to protect so that you don't go septic. Yes. Oh. So it doesn't, you know, enter your blood, doesn't rot and then enter your blood and kill you. It calcifies it. It almost forms this barrier. In the wow. same way that scar tissue does when you have mm. like fake boobs. You you like you like those videos when the scar <laughs> <laughs> when the scar oh, tissue forms boobies? around the implants. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was like, don't bring up my fake boob video appreciation. Um, did, I am curious. Does that affect your sleep because it was a sleep associated um, abuse? Yeah. So recently, I used to attribute my. I used to call them episodes and I thought it was just my heart because I had a procedure done um, on my heart like six years ago to fix like a poor electrical conductivity. And these episodes, I would wake up in the middle of the night sweating. I couldn't breathe. And then my heart would race to like 200 beats a minute. Jesus. And I was like, oh, it's just a heart condition. But no one in my family has this heart condition. Mm. Like I had, There's no. And then I figured out that and then for like two years, I was so afraid to fall asleep. Oh, and um, I f no, when, oh, maybe yeah. it's because I'm going to go into palpitations, but right. really it's like you're getting tri trauma, re-triggered. Right? Yeah, or triggered. And I would only sleep when the sun would go up. Mm. Oh, and then I sense. felt safe. Um, yeah, I couldn't leave the house for a couple of years. I would like have these huge panic attacks at Gelson's, like on the fruit aisle. I'd be like, "What the fuck is happening?" Damn, yeah. and um. I figured out now because I switched therapists after that, that they basically suggested that, hey, like this could be maybe tied to that. Yeah. yeah. And Isn't it, that, that's crazy. It's crazy how like everything, most physical things are just like because something bad happened to you. Body keeps you the score. Yeah. It really keeps the score. Your body remembers things. Your body will make you leave a relationship before your heart wants to leave a relationship. Like your body will do things like I always have my spidey senses uh, very, very rarely, but like sometimes if somebody's behind me, walking behind me down the street, I'll know, I'll just get like this feeling in my stomach. I'm like, that guy, I gotta get away from this guy. Which is like your body really is incredible with its radar. 
Uh, have you read The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker? No, but I've had that book recommended to me before. He talks about how like a woman will be in an elevator and a man will like be trying to get in and the woman will be afraid of that man. But like because we're so trained yes. to be polite that we would rather like hold the door, let them in, be stuck in a metal box with this man, then be rude and let the door close. Mm. Yeah, there's statistics about like when women are attacked, like that they they are they felt like they should it should have gotten away from that person. Like I'm talking like street attacks, and because of the politeness, like they didn't want to be perceived as uh, impolite or anything like that. So they went against their own instincts, yes. and then it of course leads to their detriment. Yeah. Anyways, just thought I'd throw that out there. Love that. <laughs> I love that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely states. right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, well, let's, you want to do another card? Do you have more questions? No, go ahead. Yeah, we got 10 minutes. Um, nope. Uh, nope. It's all childhood yep. once she's pulling. <sighs> Who knows most about you? For me, it's, it's definitely <laughs> my parents or Dave. My, it's probably my parents. So wait, can That's I ask nice. how you feel like, so you, you you consistently talk in front of your parents about how you feel like you didn't like get to the, your needs met as a child, yes. but you That's still freedom that share you talk with about them? It. Like what, so how how is that, is it mended now, the relationship? They're pushing back, right? <laughs> yeah, they, oh yeah, they don't. I've gotten they the have a rebuttal. <laughs> oh yeah, what my dad heard me talk about it on our podcast. He called me, he said, that now, because I said that, he thinks that Kalila and Annie made up all their molestations. He doesn't believe anything on our show anymore. Oh, because that couldn't possibly be true? Oh, yeah. that's fun. So I, like, get they're, they're I get calls from podcast. my mom. Yeah, all the Wasted time. Wasted Wednesdays. Yeah. They, yeah, they just, they don't agree. And, um, <laughs> but that's I would so say funny. we have a good adult relationship. Okay. And, like, it's a very safe space for me to be very honest and open with them. And, you know, like... Wow, yeah. that's a really, that's a cool freedom that you can yeah. be honest about that and they like respectfully disagree, but you could still have this closeness. Wow. Yeah, it's probably because I <laughs> have money. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Really? Wait, that's fucked up. <laughs> it's probably because I have control over, no, I mean, <laughs> like my mom would be like, can I have Uggs? <laughs> like, that's probably why. Oh, are you serious? Wow. Uh, maybe a little, that's, but I don't know. Fuck. Maybe not. But you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. I'm buying their love back. It's, yeah, I did I'm, that. I, yeah. I did that with my parents. Really? I really can relate to that. And I don't think it's to my detriment, really. Same. I feel like, all right, well, you know, I have a slightly more advantage than I used to. And really, like, even for my mom, it's like, I have to meet her where she is. Like, mm. I cannot sit there and wait for this person to change, to mend, to like, it's just. Yes, I think so, that's a good realization as an adult. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, it's meet, not going to Meet your happen. parents where they're at. That's a great. Is. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to not hold on to the bitterness if they never met you where you're at. Um, correct. But that's I don't think at. I need that as much anymore. Like, nice. and meeting her where she's at does involve some kind of financial security. Right. Mm. So if, it, if it helps, it helps. I yeah. I oh, certainly bought yeah. my parents love. I bought them yeah. a house. I bought them half a house. And right. then, but the, as my dad told me, you've never done anything I can be openly proud of as he's sitting in the home that I purchased. <laughs> oh, I'm like, fuck. Do you see the irony? But. <laughs> well, I also think like we, our parents can never meet us where we're at because if things are working correctly, you will go beyond a point that they can ever reach. And that's how right. it sh societally should work. Yeah, because we progress that. with all the, with yeah. every decade, with every generation, we hopefully progress emotionally and intellectually. And it's like, yeah, you're, you're coming from two different universes. Yeah, every generation should be doing better if things are working out. I mean, obviously it doesn't always work out that way, but yeah, in an ideal situation. Wow. Who knows the most about you? Is it... I, Take a, I'm going to take a guess. Mm -hmm. Is it Bobby? No. Really? Wow. Hard no. From that's Kalila. a hard no. He doesn't even know my birthday. <laughs> Wait, that's what? crazy. How, How long were you together? Date? 10 years. I was going to say, what like a decade, fuck? right? A decade? <laughs> A decade, he just- My bro. best friend forgets my birthday sometimes. I, I guess meeting yeah. someone where they're at. Sure. Yeah. But um, see, when does that turn into enabling or, I guess I guess if it doesn't upset you, then it's fine. It can't upset me because he doesn't know his mother's birthday. I know his mother's right. birthday. He doesn't okay. know you his mother's like Korean name. You know what I mean? Like, uh, okay. Um, it, again, he's somebody who really struggles with um, ADHD. He was he wasn't medicated for a really long time, uh, so things just like slip out of his brain I real quickly. See. He can't hold on to things. He even want, if he, even if he wants to. Um, I'm Does no, he have an eye calendar? Well, though? Well, no, okay. I know. Yeah, like I, a, I would say I know. You know the most. The about most him. about him. I, 
more than anybody. That's what, okay. Then yeah. I, that, Interesting. that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> it would probably Good have safe. to be like my sister. My sister is my absolute soulmate. I don't mm. think I have uh, to find a soulmate. Like the pressure oh, is nice. off to oh, find a soulmate for me. That's nice. You found one in your family? Yeah, that's just my so sister. Nice. We had to, she's my war comrade. Right. We were in the trenches together. Yeah, we're right. only a year apart. Oh, whatever shit. I saw, she saw, whatever you know, fingers made their way up me. They made up, you know, their way up her as Sisterly well. Love. Like yeah. lovely yeah. holiday Almost story. Like, yeah. Yeah. And she, there is nothing in like, I could just go to her and there's just zero judgment. Yeah. She, it's always love, like wow. pure, 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 untainted, like love and respect. My God, you did find a soulmate. I did. She's my soulmate. And it's your fucking sister. That's yeah. like the best. It's the best. Because if it's a par romantic partner, like so many things, I mean, anybody could die at any minute, but like when it's a romantic partner, it's not like, forever you could say and you can get married but the divorce rates and stuff like it's not it doesn't feel as solid as when it's like a family member like that that's really beautiful and she can't go anywhere she mm -hmm. cannot escape the sisterhood yeah yeah <laughs> what like you have with your sister <laughs> is what i will be looking for for my whole life in that your fiance is, <laughs> in everyone i meet yeah <laughs> well I, I i've never i don't have a sister but i do like it's i have a lot of friends with sisters and i have never seen two people fight to such an extreme the way i've seen sisters fight Woo! Like, I, it doesn't sound like you and your sister have that dynamic, but like the sisters that I know, like they will annihilate each other verbally and then be like fine the next day. I'm like, wow. Yeah, when I see two wild. sisters fight, I'm never worried. I'm like, oh, that's just probably like three of the 10 they'll have this week. Wow. But my sister and I, like my mom did this thing. Um, I don't know if it's just like her thing or if it's a Filipino thing, but um, she um, kept my sister's umbilical cord um, kept mine and then she made them and made it into like one giant meatball and she still has it preserved. Wow. And, oh, interesting. And she was like, they're going to be in some whatever witchy shit she was doing. She was like, these two she girls. Um, I don't know. Mm. Maybe it sounds pretty witchy to turn yeah. um, an, um, to umbilical. To a meatball? Yeah, into a meatball. Wow. And she was like, they're going to be close. They're going to have each other for the rest of their lives. And it worked. Oh. So, Ooh. Wow. I'm jealous. Pretty disgusting. It, I, I still see it. Like, oh. I have a picture of it. I'm like, oh, my God. Ugh. I'm like, how do meat. I get the umbilical cords of men I know? <laughs> <laughs> Find out where the mother lives. <laughs> Who knows the most about you? Uh, my ex, James, for sure. Oh, wow. What was Damn. that like? Damn. Having an ex that knows that much about you? Uh, did not end well. well but I know the most about so him. So like, we have so much dirt on each other that it's just like, we, we, we just, we've just we've just silently agreed to not use it against each other at this point. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, we don't, we don't, I haven't spoken to him in years, but that's my assumption, James, right? Wherever you are. <laughs> Wherever you are. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, obviously, that was like not a great breakup. Yeah, but that can, makes it sting. Can it be like? Can you just be that intimately like? Um, what do I say? Like knowledgeable about another person, and how can that end so badly? Like, I cannot. I don't see how it can end any way but badly. Honestly, maybe you're right. Yeah, Love because, because you know together. so much about it. So like the. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, oh God. I mean, like he probably is like a, a, a soulmate, but like it's often that you don't end up forever with your soulmate. It's kind of like a twin flame thing. Yeah. Like you either, you mm -hmm. sometimes you Cross just paths. cannot. Because it, it, it's a constant mirror to you. Yes. And it's yes. too much. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it was like, it was the only person I've ever dated that that was dating myself, like dating myself. So it was like great, but it was also like e extremely agitating mm -hmm. because- you're seeing all the, yin and yang. You're seeing all your great qualities, but you're seeing all your bad qualities, like being the most stubborn person on the planet, you know, et cetera. Mm. So <laughs> yeah, damn. It's weird. I mean, I don't, I don't find, feel like, I don't, I find I'm like, I, I have a calmness in it. I don't feel like unsafe or anything, but I also don't like have any secrets that I'm unproud of really. So even if he released everything I ever told him into the world, I would feel okay with that. I would feel nice. betrayed, but I would feel like, I wouldn't be like, oh no, he's got something on me. You right. know, you stand by your decision. I have way more on him. Nice. So. <laughs> That's the best. That's how it's gotta be. <laughs> Upper hand, baby. You're safe. <laughs> yeah. um, I love this question because this reminds me of the Akashic Records um, because I was told to ask like, what do you want to know about yourself? If a fortune teller could tell you one thing about your, your future or yourself, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna add that. Your future or yourself, what would you ask? It's something my therapist has constantly told me no, but I, am I the problem? <laughs> You're Taylor Swift, of course. You, yeah. yeah, like am I the problem? That's a good one. And 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 
you know, I've asked my therapist over and over again. I'm like, I need to know if I'm, I need you to be as like blunt with me in this. And she's just like, no, no. Like truly, I don't think so. Were you pissed when she said that? Yeah, because it would be just <laughs> give me so much, be like, all right, it's me. Like I got to fix shit. But yeah, sometimes I want to know if like, if if there's something just inherently like wrong with me. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything wrong with you, but I think like a good way to approach life is like going into every situation, assuming you're, you are the problem, but not in a self blamey way, just in like a, that I have the power mm. to, course, to change this yeah. for the better. Cause yeah. like, that's how I try to, cause I, I go, I, I mean, I'm just not, not, I don't have the power to change anybody else. So now I try to look at situations that I'm in. It's like, what can I personally do to make this, a lighter load for me and the people involved, right. you know, I'm big on that too. Or like yeah. if, if someone is making me mad, it's like, well, what is it about me? That is right. why am I so mad about this? Yes. It's something that I yeah. must see myself. Yep. Like, that's mm -hmm. a hard lesson to swallow, but like I continuously, I'm always like, all right, it's in here. I have the, I can let go. I should be able to, you know? Yeah, no, I know. Cause there's something about like, you know, how therapists see us in our best light, but I also think it feels, feeds a little bit into like this obsessive victim mentality that we have, especially going on in America right now. And it's like, it's not denying that, you know, we have all been the victim of something, uh, but it, it's uh, what how, you can't, how's you can't that going to help that, uh, yeah. as a badge forever? It's just yeah. also just not going to, you're going to go, okay, there's not, there's not like a lot of do in that. There's not a lot of activeness yeah, in that. Is, yeah, you're right. You're almost like sort of paralyzed in your victimhood. Yeah. It's a bad place to be. One thing I was talking about, I'm like, ooh, let me ask, let me ask you gals. How do you forgive someone? Like, how do you, like, if you, someone mm. hurt you and you go logically, I can pinpoint why they are the way they are. I can, it doesn't make it better. And I can like, lo like, I find myself logically forgiving somebody and then I just get they fucking pit like a memory will pop up I'm like oh fuck you and I'm like wow I really because I know forgiveness selfishly is like best for the person forgiving is yeah. it someone that is still a part of your life or someone you just My have mom. no contact with <laughs> yeah because it's it really is like two different things right to like have to forgive someone you face regularly versus having to forgive someone like you know like an ex-boyfriend like right. for instance like I don't need to forgive uh, um, my ex Alex I don't mm -hmm. he just is shitty still yeah. shitty don't care i just right, don't okay know yeah. you know what i mean like there's no need oh, maybe for me forgiveness even... isn't necessary yes yeah, for just... some reason i have it stuck in my head that forgiveness is necessary for the person to heal but maybe it's not for you to heal or for her for, to heal for me for me well i mean i think maybe have you tried just like ex accepting it instead of forgiving mm. Mm. i think those are two very related things it's just like accepting that that's what happened that's who she is that's like who you were dealt as the card that's the card you were dealt as your mom because i mean yeah. that's just how it is it's just yeah. like we're just dealt these these cards and you maybe it's like forgive the circumstances that you were mm. dealt rather than the person yeah, because it's the same oh, thing. Yeah. Like my mom beat my ass, right? Yeah. My ex Alex beat my ass, mm. but my mom, I'm able, like I want to forgive. There's a deep like burning feeling that I have where I'm like, I want to make things right. But the ex is just like, oh, who gives a fuck? Because forgiving yeah. your mom gave you peace, right? Right. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to find. I have it. I have it. But I, yeah, I'm like, ah, I don't mm. Or it's find something thing. within like, so it's like, okay, so yes, all the, the she, she did all these terrible things, but also without her, you wouldn't exist. True. So find a small thing to be grateful to her for. And maybe that can help eat away at, or, or, or maybe that can just like help earn her a spot in your life. The, something yeah, the like acceptance. that. Yeah. That was certainly usher and acceptance also, that I could see happening. As someone, I know nothing about the situation, but what's helped for me is looking at like, well, what were those person's circumstances? What was done to them? For sure. Are like, you know, it's not just, I'm always that, that's how I can find forgiveness. If I, if I'm able to is like, ugh, they had it bad too. And they, yeah, yeah. they probably didn't want to be this way to me or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm, I've definitely looked into that, but I'm stuck on this. Did you do it on purpose or did you not? I can't tell. Because a mental illness a lot of times is used as a cr oh, I'm mentally ill. I don't know right. what I'm doing. Meh. I feel like you did though. I don't know. But if you like, okay, so you like who you are now, right? I love who I am. Okay. So then it, it, thinking kind of in a woo woo way to be who you exactly who you are now, everything that happened to you up until this had point exactly had to happen, mm. true. including your mom treating you the way that you did, uh, the way that she did. Um, and that made you who you are, who you love now. So it's like the gift that she gave you is this wonderful version of yourself that you now have. 
That's beautiful. Look at me, guys. Thanks, girl, fix. This is the only thing I'm good at. Ooh. I love it. Giving that. advice is literally my only talent. So That's good. Okay. Ask anyone I online. I just got a shift. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you. Thanks, girl. Now, if only I could, I don't know, implement any of this in my own life, we'd be doing great. <laughs> um, guys, this has been fun. Thank you Same so much day. for being on the show and giving great advice and, um, and opening up. Um, where can we find you online? What do you want to promote? You guys should check out Trash Tuesday. And obviously the episode that you guys were on, which is awesome. It's on YouTube and we would love to have you guys back. That was Absolutely. a big Santa episode. That's that's what I remember from it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we talked about Santa, Santa a lot. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I really wow. like talking about Santa. We did. <laughs> yes. Well, Santa daddy. How about you? And um, you can find me Calamity K. And also I have another podcast, uh, Tiger Belly. So many T's. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Tiger Belly. Nice. I do with my lovely ex, Bubba, <laughs> yes, who nice. you've had on this show as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Incredible that you can do that. I love that. Yeah, so healthy. It's it's better than it's ever been. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Wow. That's yeah, great. I, so honestly, I, I, face. dare I say I love him. I've never loved him more. Whoa. And I think vice versa for him. Like he comes over to the house and we have dinner. You just hang out? We just hang out. We talk Whoa. every day. There's never been more I love yous. There's never been more sweetness. There's <laughs> never been more just- <laughs> Kalila, like, was there a break in, after you broke up? Was, was there ever a no talking period between you two? Um, impossible. This wow. So you guys like bro, brother, sister kind of like, like but that, that kind yeah, of camaraderie. But I think we crossed over into the brother, sister, probably three oh, quarters yeah. of the way in our relationship. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So it was, okay. it wasn't like a, it, it felt more it, like we didn't friends. break up overnight. It was like a very slow burn of a breakup. Lots of consideration, lots of therapy, mm. lots of like just general understanding for who, who the other is. And, wow. and I think that because it was slow, um, there wasn't, like really a, a lot of bad feelings between wow. us. There's a lot of hurt and crying. Sure. And especially for me, when he started dating other people, it was like, oh, um, I can't handle this. I know you got, you had to feel a lot of text messages for me. I'm like, is it normal that I'm hurting? Esther looks like she just put her face in like the carcass of a rotting animal. <laughs> no, I know that, that, yeah, that was crazy. I, I, I'm finding myself wanting to ask a question I know I shouldn't ask. ask. Is there any chance you Oh my God. Um, <laughs> Ooh, that's not a no. Um, <laughs> Shy Barbara Walters over there. And he, so, yeah, oh, excuse me, Miss. Well, but he, um, we talked about this last week again because we're able to talk about everything. <sighs> and the question was um, like, did we make a mistake? Mm. Um, because he's gone out there, he's seen things, and he's not liking it. And, um, but also I don't want to be the thing he comes back to because mm -hmm. he didn't like what he saw out there. Right. Um, I be also chosen. really want to feel romance. So if he can buck up and be a romantic partner, which he could not be for a very long time. Um, yeah. Like I want to be romanced. I want to be, you know, I want to feel the feels. Um, yeah. So, um, but we did ask each other that like, you know, because eventually <laughs> <laughs> Esther, <laughs> stop it. Esther's like a five-year-old. <laughs> Boy on Christmas. I know this is so bad of me. I'm so I'm being toxic. No, no, you're no. not being toxic. I think it's a curious. very fair question. Um, I would love to take more time for myself. Yeah. And maybe because like long term relationships eventually just become like deep friendships anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, so partnerships. Yeah. Yeah. And that we have down to a science. Yeah. Um, mm, that's it's nice. just the romantic stuff stopped and I you wanted that. that. Yeah, I wanted to. It's not a price you're that. willing to pay. I'll That's have not... my way in here, and you know how much I love Bobby. He, is, I love him so much, but I just think that he needs you. <laughs> But Thank that's you. not a good. But that's, that's not, not a good reason for her. For her yeah. It's not. Yeah, because she absolutely has needs, not. Right. Yeah, but that's just the one thing that I wanted that's to like, say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's and I think he's I... probably realizing that. But I think also, like a lot of times when you're, especially when you're coming out of a long term relationship, like, and you try to go out into the field, like immediately you panic because no one feels as comfortable as that person you Correct. were with for a long time. But it's like you have to get past that and then build that with somebody else. Yeah, I was like yeah. recently trying to explain this to someone, but I'm like, you're just gonna have to live that for your yourself but i already know this to be true mm -hmm. you know and it's like i'm not saying pe people get back together all the time but also like people don't want to spend people don't want to feel any moment of discomfort so they immediately go back to what they feel comfortable with but then i i really would then go 
after a couple months, aren't you just going to go back to the same habits that you had already fallen into that got you out of the relationship in the first place? And I don't think being someone's romantic partner is the end all be all of like the hierarchy of like partnerships. Like I think that we're entering the best versions of, of our relationship. It sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. it does sound and like it. And I've never been, yeah, we, we're just really tight, tight, tighter That's than great. we've ever been. And I'm just like, well, I'll take this. Yeah. Because when we were in a relationship, there was just so much resentment. Mm-hmm. Because resentment is awful. Yeah. And I'm just like, but then we were able to let that all go. Like as soon as we were like, okay, like we're done. We're yeah. Done. Wow. And when we broke up, we, I cried. I cried so fucking hard. And then we both went to the Korean spa right after. Aww. Together? Together. Huh. And um, we were like, okay, what do we do now? I'm like, we want to go to the spa? Okay, let's go to the spa. Huh. Aww. And yeah. yeah, it was just that. I just exist. I wish yeah. it was more. Maybe I would have. I don't know if I could have benefited from like glass breaking or something more of like a chaotic breakup. But this was as nice as it could have. Yeah, you don't have to set the house on fire to have a breakup. Right. You could just right. break up. And I hate the term like uncon or whatever. Conscious, Conscious uncoupling. uncoupling. Yeah. I, I almost said unconscious <laughs> <laughs> coupling, which would mean me and oh, Bobby no. getting back together. Yeah. That's unconscious <laughs> recoupling. Oops. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, That's kind of what you did in a way. Yeah. 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 But wow. He's, he's a sweet guy. He's a good guy. He's, he's, uh, um, uh, what was that? Tasmanian devil. He's, he's, he's just all over the place. He moves really fast, speaks really fast, but like, the goodness is deep in him. Aw. And I love Bobby. A Beautiful. Lot. I love him too. <laughs> I love him too. I don't know him well enough to lo- love him, but I like him. Yeah. Me either, but you know. We'll <laughs> All right. This has been Guys We Fucked, the anti slut shaming podcast. We will talk to you next Friday. Thanks, guys. <laughs>